Tuvalu won a game. And they did not. They did not just win. They didn't just win, chat. They didn't just one nil it. Bro. Tuvalu won a game. Oh, I forgot to turn the Z on. Oh, how embarrassing. My Z's off. Oh, God. Oh, no. I forgot to turn the Z on. I, you know, it's, so, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry you had to see this. Where's the button? I forgot to turn the Z on. Oh, no. Now it's on. Couldn't even start the stream. We are, that, that is true. The, it, for those that didn't know, you join us on the website today of twitch.tuvalu. You ever wonder what the .tv is? Like, if you go to Twitch, it says twitch.tv. That is the country code for Tuvalu. And so Tuvalu, a significant portion of their GDP is made up by selling the .tv, like, by selling the .tv, it's not a domain name, but, you know, the, the, the ending. Yes. But Tuvalu also has a national team. This national team is not even in FIFA. They're in the Martinique category where they, they do play in their continent, but they don't play in the actual, like, full FIFA World Cup. They, you know, Tuvalu cannot qualify for the World Cup. It is not a FIFA-approved nation. It is just an Oceania-approved nation. But good news for them, the Pacific Games have nothing to do with anything FIFA's doing. And Tuvalu... Managed to get absolutely demolished in the group stage because Tuvalu has 11,000 people, right? And that, you know, it's a little hard to win when you're rocking up with 11,000 people. But I mean, I find it here. Was it my, Monday morning? No. No, it was Saturday, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. Oh, no. Where was it? Let me find it. How did I lose it? Oh, there it is. Look at this. Look at this. Where are they? And so they do, they do this playoff. This is the most confusing screen I've ever been on my entire life. They do this playoff in the Pacific Games, okay? So if I go to the standings, the main one, uh, Tuvalu finished bottom of their group. Uh, right, Tuvalu did not show up for their game against Papua New Guinea. That's right. They didn't even show up, which is actually, I don't know if you saw this on Twitter. I thought it was kind of funny. Papua New Guinea got a forfeit, so they won 3-0 against Tuvalu. And then Vanuatu actually got to play Tuvalu and beat them 6-0. And then Papua New Guinea and Vanuatu played and drew, which means Vanuatu advanced to the semifinals because of goal difference. But Papua New Guinea didn't have the opportunity to play Tuvalu and get a better than three goal difference. Which, I mean, like, can, can anybody can look at that and be like, yeah, that's a little unfair. That's a little, oh, it's a little unfair. Oh, I'm glad you catch it on YouTube, kind of perfect. Thank you for the 11 months as part of the Hammers, dude. Thanks for supporting the channel. You're almost at Golden Bacon, too. Wes Snipes, you're almost at Diamond Bacon. Thank you for the 23 months. Conhow, thank you for the 21 months, dude. Appreciate the tier one. JC Blade, thank you for the three years. Arrow Scoop, thank you for the two months. I appreciate you. And uh, Paradiso FM, thank you for the three months. Stenoven, thank you for the prime. Prowler, thank you for the Prime. GCH, thank you for the Prime. Razor, thank you for the Prime. Thank you guys for spending like $25 of Jeff Bezos money like that. I appreciate it. Unseen Muffin, thank you for the Prime. I see you now. That's all I'll say. I see you now. So yeah, anyways, Papua New Guinea doesn't make the semifinal uh, because they didn't get to play Tuvalu. The main point is, huge day 
for not only Tuvalu, but the Northern Mariana Islands. So Northern Mariana Islands got admittedly a brutal group in the Pacific Games, right? They're grouped with Fiji and Tahiti, who are like teams with a few actual players on them. Fiji beats the Northern Mariana Islands 10-0. Tahiti beats the Northern Mariana Islands 9-0. That brings us to the ninth to 12th place matches, which is basically the four worst teams in the world, the four worst teams in Oceania. Northern Mariana beat American Samoa 4-0. Which begs the question, and I know there's like a feature film coming out about this right now. How bad is American Samoa? I want to know. I want to know if I could make the American Samoa national team. That is my legitimate question. Because Northern Mariana Islands, a team that had not won a match in nine years, a team that is not even in FIFA, a team that just got gun smoked by a minus 15 goal difference in two matches against Fiji and Tahiti. Just beat American Samoa 4 0. You couldn't. You don't know me. All right. What do you mean? I couldn't. American Samoa can beat a team comprised of this chat. No, I mean, let's be honest. They're probably significantly better than us. But, like, 4-0 to the Northern Mariana Islands. And then, of course, Tonga in Tuvalu played. Now, the Tuvalu national team, I don't know the last match that they won. I really don't. I, I don't know if we if if there's any way for us to see that. I'm, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna use Google here. Um, no. I got Northern Mariana Islands on GeoGuessr once. It was beautiful. That doesn't surprise me. They do have an, a rather conspicuously large trench near them. Um, well, that would kind of freak me out, you know? So their last win, Tuvalu's last win was in a friendly against the Chagos Islands in 2018. Before that, they did beat Tonga in 2017 at the Pacific mini games, which I can only assume is the Pacific games, but less cool. They drew American Samoa in 2019. Well, they've improved significantly since then. These are their first two matches since the pandemic. They beat Tonga 4-0. So, this, you know, the smallest country in the world won a match 4-0 over Tonga. And now Tuvalu and Northern Mariana Islands play for ninth place at the Pacific Games. I will be watching if it's possible. I will. Because that's awesome. Good for them. The Pacific Mini Games is the U11 tournament. I really hope that you're not lying. I really hope that's true. Funzai, thank you for the 26 months. 26? Wow. Alberto Solano, thank you for three years. Love you. The feature-length film about American Smo is actually based on a documentary called Next Goal Wins. Highly recommend you watch it. I probably will at some point. Looks fun. Henri Caster, thank you for the 37 months, dude. Thanks for supporting the channel for quite a long time there. I support your dream to make the American Samoa national team. I mean, it is technically, I mean, it's an American territory. So I think if I move there, like, uh, there's no, like, citizenship process. I don't know how I'd make the team, though. Madsen, thank you for the six months. Mezzer, thank you for the three months. Cargia, thank you for the 33 months. Wow. Team Fiji and Tahiti in the same groups, a group of death. Clearly, because Northern, uh, Northern Mariana Islands showed up and beat Tonga. Tonga lost to the Cook, dude, Cook Islands. Cook Islands are incredibly bad. And I don't blame them. Because I was like, the Cook Islands are way out here, dude. Like, there's out here. And then there's like, they are, they, they're, they are, they are way out there. I've always thought the Cook Islands were, you know, maybe a little too far out there. Maybe they needed to rein it in a little bit. They're way out there. Okay. What else happened? I, I haven't streamed since Friday, so a lot of things happened. 
The first thing that happened is the Tottenham dream died. I feel bad for Ange. I think Ange is very likable. Luton won. I know. Isn't Everton mudded now? Well, that was that's part of one of the other things that I wanted to talk about. Is, is, I, I did. I saved a cow. Tottenham screwed. Everton might be screwed. But Tottenham. Tottenham. I, I want I just want to say something off the top. I don't blame them. I don't I, I don't blame them. Camardo debuted for Milan. I got a really funny message. Actually, apparently somebody made a custom database in FM and gave Camarda like secondary US citizenship. And I got a message like, is this true? And I'm like, bro, even if it is true, that's like Trent Alexander Arnold being eligible for the US. Like, in not in a million years would he actually end up on the team. All right. Mike, thank you for the 46 months. <laughs> the season ain't over. I know it's not over. But the reason that I don't hold it against Tottenham is they got rocked by a few injuries immediately like just consecutively i don't blame tottenham i don't think tottenham's bottling tottenham has been like unlucky and getting been hit with injuries i don't i don't think this is a classic tottenham uh i, I don't think this is a lads it's tottenham moment is what i'm saying i don't think it's a lads this is tottenham moment i think they they lost three games they're losing the three games is harsh and they're racked with injuries it's because of his tactics. I mean, he is a feast or famine type of guy. He has some pretty wild quotes. I don't know if you guys keep up with like what Ange says. I know it's probably hard not to. And he seems to be some sort of darling of like the English British media. But uh, he says some wild where he's like, yeah, I, I don't understand when managers uh, complain about, you know, they want to play a certain way, but they don't have the players to play that way. Just play that way. And I'm like, well, there's there's. there. there there are some inherent dangers to doing that. Like I get the concept. Contact center girl. Thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Thanks for making 10 people's days. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Mad Camel, Velocity, Feg, Rob, Waz, Enlil, Andre Nascimento. Maxi, Lord W, Starch. Welcome to the Hammers. Enjoy the bacon. Enjoy the emotes. Lance, thank you for the prime, dude. Thanks for supporting the channel with a little bit of Jeff Bezos money. He's a man of principle. Can't diss that. I well, like, I get I get being a man of principle, but also like, you know, there's a reason that every other good manager doesn't say stuff like that. And I'm not saying Ange isn't a good manager. I actually think I'd, you know, Ange is one of the guys, if I'm building a team, I would be very happy if he was managing the team. He builds a culture really well. And he's a turnaround artist. He turns a team around very quickly. But I think he's also almost being disingenuous. I won't accuse such a folksy man of being disingenuous. But I think that Ange is almost being disingenuous, dudes. Like, if you look at what he does in his career, he goes, well, you know, what do you mean? Adapt to the players. No, everywhere Ange goes, he, like, brings in a whole new team. So with him, be, with him saying, like, well, you don't need certain players to play a certain type of way, I'm like, brother, you bring in a whole team everywhere you go. He did it in Japan. He did it in Scotland. He, like, he did it in Australia twice. He brings in a lot of new players to play that way because the old players don't play that way. So, uh, yeah. He built a team around Madison who isn't known for his fitness record. I mean, I don't blame, like, that's a really, like, ricochet shot thing to blame somebody for. Lord, thank you for the uh, 13 months, dude. Villa are really good. Aston Villa are actually good. Aston Villa are a great example of what to do when you sell a guy for a ton of money. Barcelona are not. Like, if you wanted to create a graph and you're like, what's the team that spent its money the best after landing a windfall? You'd be like, Villa is on the good side and then Barcelona's on the exact opposite side. All right. Presto, thank you for the six months, dude. I appreciate the prime. Perfecto, thank you for the nine months. Congrats on your Twitch, child. Thanks for spending $5 of Jeff Bezos' money and thanks for supporting the uh, 
the channel. Strays are flying. I mean, I'm, I'm usually firing a good stray at Barcelona every now and again. You got to keep them on their toes, you know? They're getting way too comfortable with their, like, 18 wonder kids they got. To be fair, one did just blow out his ACL. But, no, Villa, Villa are doing a really good job. I don't think they'll hold on to top four to the end of the season. I would be pleasantly surprised if they did, but I don't think they're holding on to top four to the end of the season. I think if, I think the the depth of big six clubs will eventually, you know, they, like, reanimate, like, freaking reappear like the Transformers. Um, do you think Newcastle? How do you think Newcastle will do against PSG tonight, bro? I don't know, but they are going at each other, and this is probably one of my. Let me see if I can find it. This is probably one of my favorite matchups. We've got dudes from Newcastle against dudes from Paris, which weirdly, you know, like so these are Newcastle fans trapped in a bar by, by what I can only assume is a is an anime, you know, like a, a flare come to life because I don't see anybody outside the bar. They seem to just be they seem to just be fighting against a flare, uh, which, you know, I don't know how that Newcastle education is doing, but maybe they just haven't figured out that it's not that dangerous yet. Um, totally respect that. You know, flares can be scary, uh, but they do seem to be throwing multiple chairs at a flare. Um, no, I, the, 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 no, to be fair, I, I, this doesn't look like Newcastle's fault. Now, I don't know what the Newcastle fans were doing before. You guys know my general stance on hooliganism. I think it's a bunch of grown men with nothing better to do. Uh, but I do think this matchup is funny. I can only imagine what they're trying to say, because even if the Parisians happen to speak English, they can't understand what the people from Newcastle are saying. So I don't, I don't really know. What are you going to throw your beer, dude? What's the plan? That's like in, in Paris. This is like $20 worth of beer. You're going to throw it. Why on earth are you throwing it? Let everybody else throw all the freaking bar chairs. What are you? Oh, we did throw it. No! Dude, that's your rent! In Paris, that much beer? Why did you throw it? Everybody else has got it taken care of, right? Mr. Stripe shirt, this dude. Why? Why? What's the point? That won't even hurt as much as a chair. What a waste. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, but I, th I just think, like... You have the Parisian ultras and you have the Newcastle ultras. And I'm like, they're, they're, they're such different people. And yet they're both known for being like a little over the top with the whole we're ultras. And that's my personality sort of thing. So that's just fun. Uh, and you know, what I really feel bad for is the dude who actually owns this restaurant. You know, the person who owns the restaurant is just sitting behind the bar like. Like, what are you doing? Like, can you just pay, please? You don't even have to tip here. Just leave. All right. You know why they're probably fighting? <laughs> These Newcastle fans were probably waiting two hours for food, dude. This is Paris. And they got a little hangry. And they started throwing some chairs. You know, they ordered some charcuterie. And it was taking, like, two hours to come out. And then the other Parisians were walking by and they're like, hey, man, you have to wait for the food. Never asked me to do a French accent again. I tried once. You heard me try. You want to know I'm a max effort type of guy. I put in the effort. It wasn't to be. But, you know, a baguette or something. And then, you know, they walked by and they said that. I actually I've had a I've had a couple of fun time, a couple of fun times in Paris. I, I, there's something, maybe this is just my own American, like, a, a feeling of American inadequacy. A feeling of American inadequacy. So pronunciation isn't your thing. I, I'm convinced you've never met, like, a normal American person. Because I think I'm doing pretty well. But <laughs> I, I'm saying that because this weekend I said the, I said the word Buenaventura. I said Buenaventura. And somebody was like, somebody near me was like, wow, you pronounced that really well. And I was like, thank you. Being Parisian, I feel attacked. No, I have no problem with Paris. I'm just saying when I go to Paris, I feel inferior. There's something about Paris. 
There's something about France. When I go to Paris, I feel like I'm not good enough to be there. You know? Like, I remember I was sitting in a crepe place. I was sitting in a crepe place. Like, I relate with these Newcastle fans. I mean, don't throw stuff. Right? But I was sitting in a crepe place, and nobody speaks English, which is fine. I'm not somebody that's bothered by people that don't speak English. There are other Americans, you know, that'll be like, I'm in Paris. Damn it, why don't they speak the English? Right? That's not me. But nobody speaks English, and so I have no idea what's going on, and I can't lay on the normal Zealand charm. Right? So I'm, I'm, we're sitting in this crepe place. It's me and, like, my best friend from when we were five. It's the kid that got me into streaming Antarks, right? He's around every once in a while. And we're sitting at this crepe place, and we may or may not be sober. And we're at the bar in the crepe place, and it's, like, 12. And we sit down. Like, there's no sign or anything. There's no, you know... Please wait to be seated, right? This isn't a Chili's. So we just walk in and we sit down at the bar. And I swear to you, over the next hour and a half, every single person that is either a patron or working at the place looks at us. Just looks at us. You know, in various levels of confusion, interest, perhaps disgust. And we sat there for an hour and a half without anybody talking to us. Now that coming from the American culture is like just bizarre. Like, even if you don't speak the language, like somebody be like, you know, like kind of point it, like you want that. And I was like, okay. So we just sat there and then we were deciding like, you know what you do. You were sitting there and we're just, just trying to figure out like, so do we, um, how long are we going to like, how long are we going to stay here? Right. We weren't being unreasonable. Right. I mean, there, I, I, I'm totally aware of the fact that, if I'm telling this story, I could be like leaving certain details out where we were being super annoying. We actually weren't talking at all. We were sitting there in increasing levels of discomfort because we were aware that maybe we had done something wrong, but we hadn't. Apparently, that's what you're supposed to do. We It took us two and a half hours to get a crepe. And that really, that experience embodies my feeling when I'm in Paris, right? Where I'm like, wow, I feel like I'm like stepping on somebody's toes here. Like, I'm not supposed to be wearing this flannel right now. I'm not a particularly fancy person. Yeah, it took us two and a half hours. And then eventually, we never ordered, which I, I kind of respect this move. We sat there for two and a half hours, and that's not a hyperbole. And then somebody just brought us a crepe. And you know what? It was amazing. It was a great crepe. Chocolate, bananas, awesome. Where was that in Paris? I have no idea. No clue. Somewhere near the Airbnb we had? <laughs> I, I don't know. I have no, I could not tell you. I've been, for somebody that has this opinion of Paris and feels not good enough to be there, I have been to Paris like five times. Um, I, yeah, I've been to all the museums and everything. They're very cool. But I'll be honest, there's only so many times that, like, I don't know how many people have painted Jesus, right? But I feel like there should have been some guy in the 300-year history of the Renaissance that was like, yo, what if we paint literally anything else? Right, because I'm walking through the Louvre, and I'm like, I get it. Like, I know what he looks like. Like, maybe we could just, I don't know, some nature. Like, I get why they were like, wow, this Monet guy is cracked, right? Because he's painting water lilies, and they're like, <gasps> I don't know. That, that was my, I, 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 I had a good time. I, I had a good time at all the museums. I, I'm a bit of a history nerd. I went to all three in one day, actually. Bit of a history nerd. What else happened? Garnacho? Garnacho chips? So I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look you dead in the eyes. I'm going to say something. Right. And, I, and if you are French or Parisian, I want you to take absolutely no offense by that. I mean it seriously. I feel like I'm not good enough to be in your country or your city. I don't hold that against you at all. I just feel like my culture didn't prepare me. Uh, but I want to look you dead in the eyes and I want to say something. That Garnacho goal is legitimately one of the five best goals I've ever seen. Ever. I mean, it's like Ankara Messi, right? Goal of the century. Okay, Zlatan's bike, 
and maybe Gareth Bale in the Champions League final? Look, forget about when it was scored. Forget about when it was scored, right? Out of the second minute against Everton. If you just take the goal, I mean, that's, it's stupid. It's stupid. Like, it is a stupid goal. It's a goal that while you are watching it, you're like, oh, man, I'm going to be watching this for the rest of my life. You know? Richarlison, look, Richarlison's World Cup goal was really good, but I don't think it's quite in the same conversation. Okay. Beckham's half-field goal. Um, shout out to the Beckham documentary for bringing that back. It's not a terrible shout because he was kind of the first guy to do that, but I don't think that it's in that category now. Roberto Carlos free kick? Yeah, totally in the conversation. Roberto Carlos, Ro yeah. Roberto Carlos free kick in the conversation. But the quality of that goal. And you guys know me. I don't really like Garnacho. I don't. That goal? Look, I don't know how you can take five goals, right? Somebody said they can find five better Messi goals. I'm like, look, just because... Jerome Boateng has terrible balance. Doesn't mean that goal is one of the five best goals of all time. But there are a lot of amazing goals. I don't know how you can look at five goals scored in history and go, that is convincingly better than what Alejandro Garnacho just did, and here's why. You can't. Because as much as Garnacho is like, well, he's kind of in this, you know, He's in this Rashford category where it's like, yeah, we think he's going to be a star at some point, but we're not sure when. And then you just turn into Marcus Rashford instead, where you just kind of don't get any better from that point, right? Garnacho is still in that period. But that's an unbelievable, it's unbelievable. Like, look where he hit the ball. Like, look where, let, let me see if I can find like a still image of that of where he's kicking the ball from. Like, I can't show the goal because it's going to be DMZA'd. But let me see if I can find a still image of the goal. Like, where, where he scored it from. Like, okay. Where he hits this from. What a terrible cross, by the way. Bro! Let, that's him. Dude. That's where he is. Such a bad cross. <laughs> I mean, seriously, terrible cross. He's here. Go, go to a field. Go to a field, right? And go stand where Garnacho is. Oh, look. I said top five. I didn't say this was the best goal I've ever seen. I think, personally, Zlatan Ibrahimovic's bicycle kick goal is the best goal anybody's ever scored. Personally. This. Go stand there on a field. And then put England's number one... I, don't, I know he has short arms. Put England's number one keeper in the middle of the goal and score that. Because it's not that just the, like, he's not hitting, this, this isn't Ali Reza Yahanbosh biking it into an empty net, right? This is, he is a cool distance away at full stretch with serious elevation who is able to beat England's number one goalkeeper from there on a bike. He hits an absolute rope that is dead accurate. It's crazy. Yeah, like how far does he have to move before hitting the ball too? I think that's definitely an important part of it. So I'm going to go back small so I don't get DMCA'd here. So he's here. He's there, right on the edge of the six. And then he's got to run back, change it around. The audacity. To me, the biggest thing about a goal like this is the audacity. Like... You can probably count the number of Premier League players that would even try to score this on one hand.
like, who are the players that would even try this that are in the prem? Obviously, Ronaldo would go for it. But the audacity to even try to score this goal. I... <sighs> Giroud would. Yeah, Giroud would absolutely be going for this. I don't think Giroud's got the wiggle in his hips to get to this spot anymore to go for it. Holland would try. Ha, I don't know if Holland... Darwin Nunez would absolutely try. So Darwin is one. Diaz, that's two. I don't. Th I can't. See, do you? Can you, I don't see Mo Salah getting upside down. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's about to score a bike like that. So then, Cara Messi is not a great goal. I mean that that's bait. That's bait. Don't bite on that. That's bait. Holland would try if it was already three. Anthony would have tried. Well, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. I mean that 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 does not count. Saying Anthony would try is like saying I would try. That doesn't mean I'm going to hit it. Doku? I don't know. I don't know if I've watched enough of Doku's game. Doku's not really a goal scorer, though. He is a playmaker. Richar Richarlison might actually be able to hit it, too. That's the funny thing. I think if you gave Richarlison, like, 25 cracks at this, he might get it. I don't think... It, if he, has anybody ever seen Grealish go for a bike? I can't really picture that either. I don't like there's only certain people that and I honestly wouldn't have thought that that Garnacho was one of those people until he scored this. So it, there is always a chance that somebody's capable of surprising you, right? But you have to be a certain type of person to be like, yeah, I'm gonna flip. Yeah, I'm gonna flip. And it's not necessarily about being a safe player or not, but it's like Kevin De Bruyne is not going to score a bicycle kick. That doesn't mean he's not an amazing player. There's just certain players that have the audacity, that have the, I mean, the athleticism. This is a crazy athletic play. Holland's body, I don't know. Holland's very pliable. Hey. <laughs> like Berbatov would go for this. Yes. Peter Crouch. Probably my, yeah, that's, uh, dude, Peter Crouch for sure. A confident Rashford. Harry Maguire would do it easily. Right, I don't think I talked about it, but that Harry Maguire play where he like passed it off the face of the dude from North Macedonia and then fouled the bejesus out of him is one of the funnier things I've seen in a long time. Also, how about who had Rafael Varane getting pushed out of a first team by Harry Maguire on their bingo card for this season? I have a lot of respect for Harry Maguire. He's such a meme. But I have a lot of respect for him. That dude put his head down and was like, I'm going to try and earn a spot on this team. And then he did. Yeah. Boom. Ah. Hot take. Harry Maguire wouldn't try that bike. And I'm disappointed by that. You mean Johnny Evans? Yeah, but that's not the way Ten Hag's shaping it. Ten Hag going, well, you have two brilliant players, Harry Maguire and Rafael Varane. And I'm like, do you? Do you have two brilliant players in Harry Maguire and Rafael Varane? Is that what you have? No, but this goal is amazing. The other funny thing is with this goal, I still don't know if Garnacho is that good. Leal? Yeah, but not Prem. We were just talking about other guys in that league that would go for it. Uh, he's good, but raw. I don't know, man. I, I'm worried Garnacho's the next Rashford. I don't know why worried's the wrong word. Like, I do take joy in Manchester United's downfall, you know? But I'm worried Garnacho's kind of the next Rashford. Not to mention, he's always been a guy that I always... Like, there's certain players where you're like, I can't relate to you at all. Like, you just seem like a weird guy. I feel like I can't relate to you. But then, the, the, like, this video comes out. You don't know if this is, like, he's giving the boots that he scored the goal with to a, to a young fan. And you're like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe, like, I think it just goes to show that even people that you're like, I can't relate to this guy, and he seems super weird. But doesn't mean he can't be a nice guy and he can't be really good. He has the worst. He does have a terrible haircut. He has a terrible haircut. He's like a medieval peasant with flair. Like, okay. Tell me Garnacho doesn't have this haircut. So Garnacho, this is what I mean. 
This is a guy from the show The Last Kingdom, right? Okay, that's just terribly small. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna create a juxtaposition for you. All right, this is a dude from the show The Last Kingdom, named Aldhel. All right, Garnacho haircut. It's the same thing, dude. It's the same thing with flair. He's missing the two eyebrow slits. Okay, seriously. He looks like this dude's about to rock up to try and stop a Viking invasion. That, like, that's what he's going for. It's the same thing. He's about to rock up to try and stop a Viking invasion. I'm here for it. They were rocking this haircut a thousand years ago. Bex had some questionable hairstyles. Oh, yeah, we're not talking about anything important here. He looks like, you know, he's a, the dude's trying to defend CK3 in real life. He's trying to defend Christianity against the heathen hordes, right? Like, that's what I'm getting here. Yeah, no, we're not talking about anything important. I just feel like this is, you know what? This is important. This is important. I, you know what? I love that. But I don't know if it's the best look for him. You know, I'm not a man of any fashion or style, but I don't know if that's the best look for him. Like, I was growing my hair out, and I hit a certain point where I'm like, ah, I don't know if this is really showing me off in the best light anymore. So I got a haircut. <laughs> he's 18. He's 19. All right. Patience? Patience for what? I mean, it's, yeah, footballers notoriously get better haircuts as they get older. That's not important at all. I Do I think Garnacho is, I, I don't think, I think Garnacho's ceiling is like not, I mean, football manager actually kind of agrees with me on this. They don't think Garnacho is going to get too much better. Football manager has his potential, so his current ability is like 145 on a scale of 1 to 200. And his potential ability is a range from 150 to 180. So I suppose if he hits on the 180 side, then he's becoming significantly better. But they... Uh, I don't know, man. Like, will Garnacho ever score more, like, 20 goals in a season? Yes or no? If he goes to a different team, all right, in any future, right, is is Garnacho somebody that could be, like, even a Mo Salah, right? Now, he's obviously not going to be Messi or Ronaldo, but, like, even a Mo Salah type of player where he's a star in the prem for five or six years, like a real star that you can win the league with him being your best player. Because that's what Manchester United is kind of banking on him doing. You lot hate United so much, it's hilarious. I like, and I, I cannot stress this enough. I like to make fun of everybody. I love it. I love making fun of every team. You can check the tape. I have made fun of every team. Hate is a strong word. But I like to just make fun of teams. Like, it's good. It's healthy. It's fun. You're the family guy of FM. No one's safe from your jokes. I'll take it. Garnacho's a poor man. Garnacho's a poor man's Landon Donovan. And I think everybody can see it. I, I'm ex I, I'll be honest. Yeah, this goal has changed my opinion of Garnacho probably more than it should. I'm now sitting here like, you know what? I think he could be that most solid type player. That or he's Hatim Ben Arfa and we're going to get treated to three or four of these throughout the rest of his career. And I cannot wait, you know? Like that'll be that'll be awesome. Just just for the highlight reel alone. But he might not be the type of guy that scores 20 goals or whatever. But Manchester United will pay this kid as much money as as long as he wants to stay there. After this goal, Manchester United will pay like it's kind of funny to think about how much this goal is going to change this kid's life. Cause it is. Cause it is absolutely going to change the kid's life. They're gonna be like, yeah, we gotta keep him now. He must stay now. If I scored that goal, I'd retire happy. Oh, dude, same. Are you kidding me? 
I'd walk into every social situation carrying a giant video board that was replaying that goal. Wait, did we just create a stream elements thing that every time you mention Garnacho, it says, did you mean Aldhelm from the last kingdom? I'm done, dude. Who made that? That's so good. Every time you say Garnacho in the chat, it brings up all the help from the last kingdom. <laughs> oh, man, that's good, dude. That's really funny. Shout out to the mods. Clap it up for the mod team there. Fa, thank you for the 13 months, dude. Banksy, thank you for the 10. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. Hope you guys are having a great time. Hope you had a great weekend. Hope you had a great holiday if you're uh, celebrating Thanksgiving this past week. Um, I, I love hanging out with you guys. Love getting on with you guys. What else did I miss over the weekend? What else do you want to talk about? What else did I miss over the week? Oh, my. I saved a cow. Oh, chat. Who has no idea what I'm talking about? Thoughts on Kobe Minu? Yeah, I they weren't kidding. I thought it was, it's one of those things where you couldn't tell if it was a joke or not when they were like, yeah, he's hurt, but he would be involved in the first team if he wasn't hurt. Yeah, they were serious. They were serious he would be involved in the first team if he wasn't hurt. Kobe Minu is legit. Mm, I honestly, right now, still think Kobe Minu is probably going to be end up being better than Garnacho. But I saved a cow. So for those that don't know, I am a closet country boy um in some aspects you know i i i am somebody who grew up around farm animals who grew up uh, you know with a with a farm accessible um you know in 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 you know cleaned troughs and fed donkeys and fed cows and so on and so forth um i did not you know, I, I didn't live on a farm uh full time but my like there there is a farm my family has relation to that I spent a lot of time at. Um, so I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to try and pose as somebody that was like, well, I planted the corn at 4 a.m. Like, that's not what I was doing. But I am, uh, we have, you know, these, uh, the, we, we have this area where there's these cows, right? And big cow fields, um, they're not technically ours, like, in terms of, I, I, it's a family friend who owns the cow fields that are in this area. But he, we're, he's a family friend, so we have the, sorry, this is very weird and hard to explain without doxing myself. But I have, you know, these, like, dirt bikes, like motorcycles that are, you know, you, you know I don't know, you've seen the X Games, the dude's doing the backflips, they're those motorcycles. And so we'll take those and we'll just zip around the field, right? There's a huge fields with these cow herds in them. And you're just like zipping around on a motorcycle. It's a really fun time, um, right? There's like a kind of quarry pit that you can take the motorcycle through and then you jump out the other end. It's like, it's fun. And so we're cruising around. My brother is cruising around first. I'm over here like at the fence feeding the cows, just like hanging out. And Adler, who you know, is zipping through the field on on the motorcycle and he comes back he comes back and he walks up to us so we're standing at the fence feeding the cow we're like worried because one of the cows has a cactus in its lip and we're like well how are we going to get that out you know because if you've ever been around cows they're not the easiest thing to get near in like an open field so we're like how are we going to get the, the, the freaking cactus out and Adler walks up and he's like actually I have something and we're like what and he's like, so there's a cow in a sinkhole in the field. And I'm like, okay. I've been coming to this farm since I was five years old, seven years old. I have never seen a cow in a sinkhole. So I think Adler's lying. Point is, Adler knows what we're going to need to try and save the cows. So he goes to the shed to start trying to get stuff together. And I grab the motorbike. And I zip out to the fields to look for this cow in a hole. And it is, I know this is going to shock you. There's a cow in a hole. Like I, like, so for those that don't know, Florida 
is a doomed state, it's cursed. You probably knew that. What you didn't know was why. Florida is limestone. So almost all of Florida is made up of limestone. Now, limestone has one incredibly useless attribute. Hidden attribute. Limestone just disintegrates when it touches water. Super porous. And so there are these things in Florida called sinkholes, where the aquifer or these kind of underground rivers or water deposits will erode. The, I mean, I'm not a freaking scientist, but this is my basic I lived around them understanding. Will erode the limestone, and then it gets to a certain point where it can't stay up anymore, and it literally just goes... And then all of a sudden, there's a giant hole. Right? And it's really, they're kind of scary. Like, sometimes people's whole houses are swallowed up by just a random, like, sinkhole. Right? A hole, it, it's, it, it is, like, it's not some earth-shading, like, earth-shattering event. It's not an earthquake. It's just a hole opens up in the ground, and whatever is above the hole just falls into it. And so, in the cow fields, all of a sudden, there are three sinkholes. And... The first one, not that deep, fortunately for the cow. It's about as deep as a calf, you know, like a month-old cow. The second and third one are like 30 feet deep, like like really deep. Like if I was riding my motorcycle and was like, oh, look, a butterfly, and then fell into it, I'm toast, right? Like it's a sheer 30-foot shaft with a little river at the bottom. So this cow got really lucky. But if you guys don't uh, follow me on Instagram, my Instagram can pick up the story from there. Um, I, I, I'm going to try and pull it up. I, I don't know. It, it might have disappeared on me. I think it did. Dang it. View archive. There we go. I can look at my archived story. All right, so here's the um, let me let me mute up real quick. I'm gonna pull it up. Here here is the uh, the moment we discovered what was going on. This is the type of content you can expect to get on the Instagram here. So there's pulled me. off. Oh lord. Hey dude. Hi little man. You got yourself in quite the situation. Oh, we're going to get you out. So there's a cow. There, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a calf. I don't think a full grown cow would have fit in this hole, but so this is like a sinkhole. It literally just, like it just falls down. And so we're cruising through this field and then you just see. We pulled off. That. You just hey, see like a little calf head and the whole herd had left him. They just left him in there. They were like, oh, I guess we're not going to be able to save him. And so the calf was just in there. Honestly, the calf got really lucky that we just happened to be there that day. Or else the little dude probably would have died. Right? So then I mean, here, really, dude. here's a look at the size of the other hole. You could have fallen in this one. So that is what a sinkhole normally looks like. Don't worry, we'll get some rope. The other cows went to go get rope. That's what they were doing. So that he, the little dude was lucky he didn't fall in that hole because we're not saving him if he falls in that hole. That is like the deep, dark pit of despair, right? That's what a sinkhole kind of normally looks like. It looks like Minecraft terraining. Yeah, Florida's a scary place, man. You're just cruising along, and all of a sudden there's that just in the ground, and you're like, ah, ah. I'd helm drove our nacho, bro. No, you can't. I actually love that too. That's not even that bad. You, that's so good. <laughs> I'll helm I'll, I'll, I'll nacho. I'm just going to say that sometimes when I refer to him. I'm just going to say that as soon as you started, like, it's every, sometimes when I refer to Alejandro Garnacho, I'm just going to say I'll helm Garnacho, and only you guys are going to know what I'm talking about. So for those that had the off. ads, that's hey, what dude. we were looking at, right? Little cow in a hole. Little hey, buddy. Really, he was very oh, scary. Dude. So uh, Operation Save the Cow. And eventually we reunited him with the homies, but I think we, we skipped a few steps in here. 
All right, so step one. Step one. Zealand gets in the hole. This is how, how to save a cow. This is like how to save a life. Very important, guys. Take notes. So step one. No, actual step one is we call our neighbor. Now, our neighbor, whose name will remain redacted, is this awesome country dude who lives right in this area. Uh, and he is the type of person that, you know, anytime we need help with something, he is incredibly handy. He, he's about 250 years old. He sounds exactly like you would expect him to sound. Uh, but he is incredibly helpful, and he also has a tractor. So he brings the tractor and some rope over, and then he walks up, and he goes, Now I need somebody to get in that hole. And I'm the one that's been keeping the cow company for like 10 minutes. So I just get in the hole. Now what is not captured in this image is the challenge of actually like roping the cow in a confined space. Because this was not easy. This is like trying to wrestle an oiled pig in like a four-foot square. But eventually, I managed to get the rope around the cow. How many times did it headbutt you? So uh, my, my little buddy went through a few stages of uh, a few uh, a, a few stages of you know grief or regret or what is happening. The first stage was I'm going to try and run away, which is pretty ineffective when you're in a four foot circle together. And so he literally was just running in circles and I was standing in the middle of it. And eventually I grabbed him and he slipped out and then he went, all right, I can't run away from this dude. He's too fast. Fair. I am pretty speedy. And he winds up like a wind up doll and just <laughs> right into my knee, still bruised. And uh, he hit me a good four or five other times. And then I grabbed his head like prime, you know, what am I thinking of? I'm going to go with like Conor McGregor. I don't know if he ever choked anybody out, but we'll go with him. Grab his head. Get the rope. Lasso it through. Step three, pass the rope out of the hole that I have now tied around the cow. And we are going to strap it to the tractor to save our little buddy. So I, I am now comforting a cow that is very confused, that has been lassoed. And here's step four. Cow saved. Cow saved. We airlifted that buddy right out of there. Look at that. Bro got absolutely yoinked up out of that hole. Hey, what's up, Bob? Welcome to the stream. Sorry, we're talking about cows. And then I had to hold the and then oh, Zealand hold the cow down. Yep, okay. And then we hold the cow down where we untie the rope from the tractor. Farming simulator has changed. Yeah, then, he, then, you know, he had to whistle at him a little bit. He was very confused. I think he'd been in the hole for probably over a day. Because he didn't seem to know what way to go or anything. But eventually we got him back with the homies. There he, here he is. Reuniting with all, you know, he's riding through the six with his woes. Reuniting with all the, uh, all the homies. So we, we got the cow home. Very, very happy for the cow. Very exciting time for the cow. Um, yeah, but uh, that that is how I saved the cow this weekend. Yeah, that is how I said, yeah. Uh, that's how I saved the cow this weekend. It was a team effort. You know, I couldn't have done it without, without all my homies, right? The whole family and our neighbor uniting to get a cow out of, the, out of, a, out of a sinkhole. Remember, chat, save your cows. Save your cows. Is it worth it getting 24? Uh, 25 is going to be in the Unity engine, but, you know, that doesn't come out for a year. So if you have the time, then by all means. Who was here Friday? Who was here Friday? Were you here Friday? 
Are you one of the cool folks that was here Friday? Fergie, thank you for the four months, dude. Moral, thank you for the prime. Thank you for your supporting the channel with five dollars of jeff bezos money me not me me okay either answer is cool i just want to know who uh, who, who needs to know i, I just want to know who needs to know uh you know that we won a trophy on friday <gasps> oh yeah we won a trophy on Friday. We won the MTN Cup, which, while it sounds like a poverty trophy, actually really matters in South Africa. It is a tournament between the top eight teams in the league that happens over the first portion of the season, and we won the Soweto Derby 3-0 in the final. So we're cooking. Uh, in the league, we have uh, six wins and two losses from eight matches, which is a little disappointing, but we have managed to win the Be the Coach Challenge and the MTN Cup. We are headed, I believe, into an international break, so we'll get that rolling. Our first match back is the Telcom Cup, which is a cup between every team in the top flight. There are a lot of different types of cups that are going down. Uh, but we did win a trophy on our stream on Friday, and we are very excited about that. And we're, You know, we're just excited about the future of the program here with the Orlando Pirates, and I think we can really, uh, I think we can really make something special happen this season. I think we can really make something special happen this year, you know? Okay, lads. <clears throat> All right, I'm selling uh, Arati Apane. See you later, dude. He's trying to reduce the, uh, the old wage budget. Any way I can. Just thinking about getting back in FM after a year or so. Is this, the itera is this iteration better than 23? Yes. 23 wasn't that good. 23 was not that good. This one's good. Just the opinion of one dude. <laughs> Tardis, that sucks. Thank you for the 30 months. That is uniquely unfortunate. That is a spectacular way to get screwed, Tardis. Hi, dear, but the new skin coming. Can't wait. Honestly, I don't know if there are any other issues that we're working on fixing i don't remember that's an il question but il's been an, um had other things going on so i haven't been able to check on as much uh, check on it as much huh huh hey Z, i've been watching the youtube vid since 2019 first time tuning in oh ryan it's a big moment then dude it's a big moment did he play any games in this stream? No, I just started playing FM, dude. We've been doing this thing where we, you know, we spend the first hour or so of the stream talking about like whatever, you know. Uh, we talked about Garnacho, Tuvalu, me saving a cow, uh, Tottenham. We talked about Villa, Barcelona's finances, a few other things. Newcastle fans in Paris. Oh, yeah, who do I think is going to win? I think PSG is going to win, but, man, it's going to be a good time. Z loves the YouTube people more than us. He doesn't care when we all turn up. Tether, I get on to stream specifically because I'm hoping you guys turn up so we can hang out. The streams are for you. And then more people show up sometimes, but the streams are for you, Tether. Do I have a Dortmund Milan score prediction? Uh, Christian Pulisic by a million. Christian Pulisic by a million. Zealand loves YouTube more. I actually like streaming more than I like making YouTube videos. Streaming is like the reward. Making YouTube videos is like the process and the challenge. You know what I mean? Sounds like Z is an intelligent dude. Ollie, I try. Thank you for backing me up, Ollie. Z describes FM as what you wish career mode would be. I was trying to find what he was referring to. Yeah, that's true. I think when I was playing FIFA career mode up through FIFA 2016, I always hoped that it would go longer and had more leagues and was more open-ended than 
I got pointed in the direction of football manager and I was like, yeah, football manager is like when you look it up. Oh my goodness. And Yiko Moby just tore his Achilles. Shegafatso Mabasa also rolled it. Dude. He tore his Achilles playing for South Africa. What are they doing in South Africa camp? My backup striker rolled his ankle. He's out a month and a half too. Yes. Is there an SYS coming soon? There should be. I can't remember if the link's been posted already or not, but obviously it hasn't been recorded yet. Yeah, it does. I think anybody that ends up in this situation is always a little surprised. Um, I, I think usually it hits like, you know... It's usually when I get invited to stuff like when the like when U.S. soccer was like, hey, do you want to come to the game? And I was like. Right. I was like, you, me. That guy. But like, and usually I would say that usually the only time you're kind of forced to address it mentally is when you get invited to stuff. Yeah, it was, it was Brett Oppenheim. Was the guy. Um, super cool guy. That dude, that dude can go harder than I can. I'll tell you that right now. I, I backed myself. That was a foolish decision. They wanted the forehead? Standard, how did you know that? I don't think I've said that. Or was that like, did B for it or somebody say that? Or did, um? no, it was probably tactical manager said that. The moment of, am I being punked? Yeah. Or, like, I'll end up in rooms with people that I'm like, you're famous. What are you doing here? Yeah, you know I mean, like, I got to go to the Mr. Beast Burger opening in um, New Jersey. And I'm, like, in the back room with, like, you know, Jimmy. And I'm like, what am I doing here? Yeah, it was, it was hilarious, though. There was a really, there was a really, what was B-Ford like? B-Ford's awesome. We had a great time. We spent like the whole weekend hanging out. It was really, he's a cool dude. We're, he he lives some, he lives in New York. We're, we want to hang out more. We want to hang out more. Um, What's the craziest thing you would do for charity? For wax my chest. But I'm saving that one. I'm saving that one for when we can raise like a million dollars for something. I would be like, I will live stream me getting a full body wax, which will be the most painful thing ever. Now, I, I think the the biggest moment where I was like, how did I end up here was the Mr. Beast Burger opening. I was like, lit, I mean, literally, I was like, how did I end up here? I, um, because even, oh, shoot, dude. This friggin' mic coming unscrewed all the time, and now I just popped it off the table. Sorry, you're about to get some. Really seriously awesome footage of my, like, jersey real quick while I put my mic back on the table. How or why? Usually the questions I'm asking myself in those situations, how or why? Ah! Oh, dang it. I just unplugged... I just unplugged my second monitor. This is going horrifically. Oh, I unplugged the power. Oh, well, that's new. Okay. One crisis at a time, baby. Pull that out. Pop that in there. Should be coming back on now. Fixing my mic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gosh, now, child. All right, it's back. Everything's back. Sorry. I am a professional streamer. Yeah, I literally just unplugged my, uh, I unplugged the monitor. All right, I screwed the mic back on. We're fine. I don't know. I think uh I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of other moments that I was like, how did I end up here?
Um, I had a meet and greet at TwitchCon, and I was like, well, I definitely don't need one of those, surely. Then they were like, no, you do. I was like, okay. Do I have a national team or are you talking crap about their training so I unplugged your monitor? Well, come on. They got two of my players hurt like immediately, man. What do you mean? Ross, so thank you for the 16 months and I, I do appreciate it. Um, but I think in another sense, like, this is what I do now, you know? And we're trying, like, we. I'm so excited for what we have coming up like yeah guys i'm putting my heart and soul into this feral islands video it's gonna be the it is the best thing we've ever done it's gonna be the best thing we've ever done i ran into xqc in a bathroom one time that was funny that that wasn't a moment that i was like wow I did run into XQC at a bathroom. <laughs> I was just like, uh, hey. It was one of those moments where you know you end up in a bathroom with one other person, and you're like, well, there's a lot of ways we could handle this. There's a lot of ways we could deal with this situation. Why was I running in the bathroom? I wasn't. So I, um, it was at the, um, so for those that don't know, like at, at TwitchCon, there's usually these parties, like brands and teams will host parties. And that's kind of, you know, for a lot of streamers, and that, that's kind of the main point for the networking and everything. That's kind of the main point of TwitchCon is that it's this focal point. Um, and so at TwitchCon in San Diego last year, uh, I'm there. I, I had one thing. I think I was in a Twitch Rivals or something. I had one thing I was doing. And so I, I was, there 100 Thieves had a, had a party. And as you probably guess, at these parties, if they want to put, if they want to invite people that will cause a scene, I am not one of those people. Um, but if they want to, you know, there, there, there's like, there's always another level, right? There's always another room, right? And so at the 100 Thieves party, there was like this separate room for people of a certain level. For whatever, un unrecognized i am in this room right and it's like you know a smaller party within the party and so i i'm in this room i don't know why i ended up there i'm there and so this is where people like if you're ever wondering where people like pokey and xqc right are hanging out it's in that area right so i'm i'm there i'm not one of those people but i'm there and i go to the bathroom <laughs> and i walk into the bathroom and XQC just walks out of the stall and we just like run into each other and I'm like right and I go to the urinal and I go to the bathroom and I walk around and he's still at the sink so there's two sinks with like the mirrors and so I just walk up to the sink and just complete silence just wash my hands he's standing there like looking at the hair looking at his phone washing his hands you know, just me and XQC just hanging out. I was like, okay. And then I left the bathroom first, actually. I didn't even know what was going on. I'm like, okay. Yeah, well, I, 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 I captured him with my aura. No, it was just funny because I've never actually met him. Um, he's not like a friend of mine. You know, I, I, I try not to be weird in that situation. I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to be like, hey, man, love your stuff. You know, I'm just kind of like, oh. And I feel like that that's generally a good way to be in that situation. If you ever meet somebody like that, I don't think it's the worst move to go like, oh, there they are. And then just move on with your life. They're like, oh, there's that person. Yeah, he's just, he was, it, it, yeah, it, I don't know. I feel like that's one of those things that like in a week later, you're like, huh, that happened. Said treat them like normal people. They are normal people. That's uh, like instead of being like, I'll treat them like normal, but it's a pretty normal dude. 
Like, I, I don't, there are very few people in that, like, in the content creator space, there are very few people that I have met that I've been like, that person's weird. They're usually just pretty normal. If a little bit more antisocial and self conscious. Zibikin, thank you for the nine months! <laughs> I hope I meet you in the bathroom and can pretend, to, uh, pretend I don't know who you are. I mean, I feel like context is always very important. Zivica, thank you for the five gifted subs, dude. Thanks for supporting the stream. I appreciate you being a part of the elite online gaming community. Chow Yang, thank you for the gifted sub to Ufka. Welcome to the Hammers, dude. But like, it, it's context. Like if we're at TwitchCon and you see me walking around, come say hi. Right? If you're at TwitchCon and you see anybody walking around, if you're at one of the, if, if I'm at a soccer match and you see me walking around, come say hi. I, that is a public facing event, right? That is, and I think for people that are in that realm, like if you're at a public facing event, you're, you know, that's part of it. You're expecting that to happen, right? And that's totally fine. But if you see me in a hoodie and slippers trying to sneak into McDonald's, probably just leave it, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Then you probably just go like, I think that was Zealand. All right. What's with the South African players and Ajax shirts? I think there's an Ajax team in South Africa. Like, actually. I think we need to we need to send a few guys out for the reserve match. Are that U nineteen? That's U uh, mm, Yeah, that's U 19s but a friendly. Problem is if we do that, then we're we're affecting our rotation. No, those guys will play against Kaiser Chiefs. I want to play the first team against Chippy United and Kaiser Chiefs, and then we'll probably check our rotation a little bit. Well, let's get into our first match of the stream, shall we? Lavinio, thank you for the 19 months, dude. I appreciate you. 6.30 is my favorite time of day, hands down. Nice. What was the debate about? Uh, have you ever seen him eat Stefan Fry went to college with a guy who helped out Berkeley men's soccer as a volunteer for three and a half years? He's a good goalkeeper, too. Uh, I don't think you get tired of hearing support from fans when it's not too pushy with all the hate stuff on here. I'll be honest. I don't think I've, I, I've ever, maybe like twice ever have I been made uncomfortable. I'm also fortunate. A lot of you guys are chill and, you know, I'm not a girl on the internet. So that the, both of those things are very helpful towards, towards that, uh, you know, that fact, but I think you, you ever, almost everybody I've ever met has always been super chill. I think most of the time you're like, absolutely. But every once in a while, you know, just, and also I'm not XQC, right? Like, there are certain people, like, they're not allowed to walk around the TwitchCon floor because it's considered a security hazard, right? There's a there's a level, right? I'm going to put Lorenzo Shy on the bench. That 16-year-old, we're going to toss him up there right now. Yeah! Yeah, I'm gonna, I went B-plus on that dad joke, by the way. I'm going to go B-plus. Zebekin, thank you again for the five gifted. Thanks for supporting the channel. Thanks for making five people's days. You're awesome. Toby Minu put in a world-class performance needs a major potential boost in the uh, January update. He'll get it. He will get it. He'll get that potential boost. La Passa's on the bench. I forgot Sakelli La Passa existed. This is what happens when I don't play the save for three days. I lose track of everything. So I have Erasmus, Montros, Masele, Masalesa. They have a sign welcoming you to it that says, welcome 
to the danger zone. If so, that's a pretty ominous international border. You know, it's pretty scary. Pretty freaky. You got it, Zibikin. I'm serious, guys. I, I think I we might have found our calling as a channel, like the next step of things that we want to do on the main YouTube channel with the video that we are making right now. I really am that I'm that high on it. I hope you guys love it half as much as I do. I'm so freaking excited for it. I'm never beating the Zelanthony Bourdain allegations. I'll tell you that much. Which players uh, in this version have been classed as latecomers? I haven't, I mean, I feel like you got to be at a bigger club to notice that because right now I'm just trying to survive. I'm not about developing players at all. Where we're at, we're just trying to build the best team we can. John, thank you for the prime, dude. Thank you for the three months. All right, there we go. Here we go. Oh, that's mine. No, it's not. This is totally mine, though. This is absolutely mine. I'm absolutely getting to that one. No, I'm not. This is ours, though. So this is first round of the Telcom Cup, which is a 16-team tournament between these 16 teams in the top flight of South Africa. So it's us against Chippy United. Uh, this is a cup, obviously, that we can be expecting to, to win. Ahamada, 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 Ahamada. Great play there. Shkurin. Oh, you beast. Saavedra. Bolivian International. Oh, this is brilliant. Shkurin. Oh, sensational. Ilya Shkurin from the Belarusian National Team with a tremendous finish from Saavedra. Oh, well, that, you know... A minor deflection that steered that ball in, but, it, you know, it was going in either way, clearly. Brilliant finish by Ilya Skurin. Who's our star? Probably Ilya Skurin. Uh, you might not be able to tell from that uh, goal, but it's probably Ilya Skurin. It wasn't offside because of the, uh, the fullback. I mean, you saw it with the lines, but, yeah. That's right. It's always us Americans having to explain the offside rule to everybody else. You know, it gets exhausting after a while. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, bud. Watch it, Buster. Thin ice there, Buster. Thin ice. The audacity. Yeah, well. Hey, I'm good at explaining it. I had to explain it to a lot of my friends during the World Cup. All right? Probably because half the chat is American. Wait. 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 Hold on. There's no way they don't have that anymore, dude. There is no way they don't have that anymore. Wait. I've literally changed where the analytics are. Oh, I think I found it. Oh, here we go. Twenty six percent United Kingdom, fourteen percent United States. 60% rest of the world. Germany and Portugal at 7%. Everything else, every other country below 3%. We have, and this is not an over-exaggeration, one of the most global Twitch chats anywhere on the entire website.
we have one of the most global Twitch chats out there. Like, you know, 26% UK, 14% US, 60% from elsewhere. It's very cool, but it's all, you know, it's uh, somebody said it was like all half Americans. I'm like, that is definitely not true. I know because I lose sponsorships because they can't ship to all you people. We also should have just scored. It was a terrible miss. I'm not letting this guy beat the allegations. Who was it? Was it Maseko? Oh, it was my speed demon. Fair enough. Yeah, he's not going to. Okay. I don't blame him. I know what he is. Skill issue? Oh, definitely a skill issue. 100% a skill issue. Yeah. They, if they can't ship to all you guys, it's not worth it, you know? Mr. Worldwide. I mean, I always think that's cool because when we're talking about something, you know, when we're talking about a club or a team or an event, you know, there's usually somebody in the chat that's been, like, affected by that in one way or another or has played against that team or is what, you know, when I'm managing a team, there's usually somebody in the chat that's like, oh, I watched them play. You know, like, there's always so many uh, fun, fun stuff. There's so many fun things like that. And you also got to factor in that, you know, most people, right, that's about 300,000 live views of the channel in the last month. Um, and so that's like, you know, most of those people are obviously not here right now at one particular moment. Cheers for making, uh, looking up anything to do with home this game next to impossible. You're welcome. I've honestly always appreciated it. Because a lot of creators get obsessed with Googling their name and stuff to, like, see what's being written about them. I can't. Because I just get New Zealand stuff. So I, you probably saved a lot of my sanity. Oh, dude. Oh, I... <laughs> oh, wait. Sorry. Huge breaking news. I only know this because they, e they, like, literally emailed me. I thought it was one of you people just like with a joke. I am on famous birthdays now. In case you ever need any background info, I'm on famous birthdays now. They've definitely gone on my Instagram. They, the funny thing is, that <laughs> I haven't seen this. They have a little checkbox. They have a little checkbox and they're like, dude, can we use your social media for images? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And they went with, okay, well that A plus, that's an A plus. Wow. Okay. That's an interesting choice. That's also an interest. I have one shirtless picture on Instagram. One. One shirtless picture on Instagram, and that's the one that Famous Birthdays just put right at the end of this thing. <laughs> What's it say? YouTube cha YouTube content creator and gaming personality, best known for his Zealand channel. He publishes content for sports simulator games such as Football Manager as well as Professional Soccer Analysis. He has more than 310,000 subscribers. Of the Do I? Actually? I started his in the corner here oh yeah i do no kidding all right thank you famous birthdays uh he also streams football manager saves on twitch which averaged around 1500 to 2000 viewers cool he played soccer in high school at steinbrenner in lutz florida he attended the university of virginia in syracuse for grad school he was a professional sports announcer they literally probably just if you go to zealandshannon.com that says all this that's probably where they came from he was a professional sports announcer before becoming a YouTuber, including three years as a radio broadcaster for a New York Yankees minor league team. Trivia is Wonder Kids from Nowhere video went viral with more than 580,000 views outside of traditional video content. He also publishes shorts. Thank you. He was born in Tampa, Florida. He has two brothers. Adler works in the YouTube channel as a producer and editor. They've both appeared on his Instagram. Creepy. I, he appeared in the video, I Visited the World's Smallest Football Stadium on the Away Days channel run by Ellis Platten. Nice! Ellis has got one. That's so cool. He also collaborated with the YouTube channel TIFO Football. I'm the number two Z... Dude, who's number one? Are you kidding me? What the hell? I'm not the number one Zealand? Who is 
Jesus child. How is there more than one? Who are you? Celan LeBrant, born in 2020. Liar! A video featuring his birth. Dude, what the f What is this? He was born on YouTube? It earned several million views just a matter of days later. Wait, what? Son of YouTube phenom Savannah and Cole LeBrant. They run a YouTube channel, the LeBrant fam. Oh. They're probably, uh, look, they might be very nice people, but they just gave me like, they, they just gave me pyramid scheme vibes just from that picture. They, they could be very nice people. I mean, clearly they have great taste in names, right? He has an older sister named Posey and an older half sister named Everly. I'll be honest. I saw this picture and I was like, one of their kids is going to have an L E I G H ending to their name that checked out. But seriously, Zeeland the Brant, that's a sick name. I can't, I can't, I'm not the number one Zeeland, bro. Who has my birthday? Kennedy Claire Walsh has my birthday? What's up? How you doing? Happy birthday. Oh, man. That's, that's fun. Anyways, I'm on this. I, I think it's weird. I'm on this. I'm a Capricorn, by the way. Apparently, that's something that's very important to know. Luke, thank you for the fun. I want. Oh, oh, that's the wrong button. Oh, that scared the bejesus out of me. All right. <laughs> thank you for the five months. Oh, yeah. January 5th was a hilarious birthday to have grown up, dude. My family celebrated Christmas, and so I always, like, I would get presents, or they'd ask what I wanted for Christmas and my birthday, and then they would just withhold some of it for my birthday, and I'd be like, look, I know you have it somewhere. Can you just give me the PlayStation now? <laughs> like, do I have to wait the other 11 days? Right? Like, I know it's somewhere in this house. Like, can you just, you know, my, my birth also... And this was the defining characteristic of my birthday. I never really like sell it. My parents go super hard for birthdays, but my birthday, I, I, I'm not somebody that like really cares about celebrating my birthday at all uh, be, because my birthday was also the day that Florida public schools went back to school after winter break. So my birthday was always the day that it was like, yeah, you know, you've been off school for two and a half weeks. Yeah, we'll wake up at 6 a.m. It's showtime, baby. And uh, yeah, so no better way to kick off your birthday than like, oh, math class, you know, <laughs> Oof. so my birthday was never the most festive occasion. It was like, let's go out and let's have a nice dinner or something. But, oh, Skurin! He was on again. Dude, their right back has no sense of time and place. Their right back has no sense of time and place. What am I doing this year? Um, we're... So the only time, my dad loves to travel. You guys have known this. Uh, I grew up traveling. My parents were always huge believers. Like when they got married, they made a deal that we were gonna travel every year. Uh, and the only time that we can travel now as a family that like everybody's work allows our whole family to travel at the same time. Uh, the only time that's allowed is around New Year's because you know, you kind of get the winter period off. Uh, and so the last two or three years we've been on a trip. So we're gonna be on a trip uh, during my birthday. We're going to be on our yearly family trip to someplace on my birthday. Stay focused, boys. Except for you, Ilya. You're just doing a good, you're playing brilliantly. I'm going to inspire you. 2 0 in the cup at home against Chippy United. Let's get one more and then I'm going to call the dogs off. You been to Norway? I have. I've been to Oslo and Bergen. It was a while ago, though. I'll tell you where I want to go is friggin' Tromso, farthest north top flight team. That looks like a great time. I would love to go to Tromso next year, do a little video there. Uh, you need to update Ilya Shkurin's profile pic. He's an actual Chad with the closest eyes I've ever seen. I feel like if you're saying that, that means his eyes must be incredibly close together. Like, if that's the first thing you're noticing... 
<laughs> Bro, you're not kidding. Dude, okay, Ilya, 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 Crimson Chin. All right, Crimson Chin, listen up, bud. All right, Crimson Chin. The lower half of your face is the most Chad half of a face I've ever seen. So hear me out, All right? We combine your chin, like I, you eyebrows down with my forehead. All right, Ilya, I'm going to make a deal. I'm going to make a deal. We combine you from the eyebrows down and me from the eyebrows up. I think we might just have the biggest head of all time if we do that. Dude, honestly, honestly, his chin does look like Buzz Lightyear. I relate to this guy. The bottom half of his face is the top half of my face. This dude has Buzz... I mean, I, I mean, I mean... I, I mean, I mean, you guys can see it. You, got, you don't even need me to put it here. You guys see it. This dude is Buzz Lightyear. He actually is Buzz Lightyear. Ilya Shkurin not only is our star striker, he is Buzz Lightyear. He's got that Pixar chin. All right, we're adding his picture. 100% we're adding his picture. You're right. You're right. We needed this. I needed this. He's scoring so many goals. I'll add him. Uh, we'll, we'll set the rest of it up after this match. Wow. Ilya Shkurin, you've changed my life. What a dude. Nice save by Alhamada. I can just put it in Buzz Lightyear's picture. Oh. Ilya just looks like such a Chad. Whoever described that and made me look at him described it perfectly. They're like, he's a huge Chad and his eyes are really close together. Yes. Correct. Dude's also a baller. Saavedra. Maseko. Take it wide. No, use your pace. Get to the end line and whip in across it with pace, man. Into the sky. Well, thank you very much for that. I need to order my sandwich. Let me do that now. So I'm going to be hungry soon, and I might as well have the food here when I'm hungry. I'm going to eat that same sandwich that I've been eating on stream recently. Thing is gas. Why? It's always Saavedra with the ball. Like, literally always Saavedra. Every single time, it's Saavedra. Man, we are swaggering. Take him! Dude, you've got 19 pace. Take him. Oh, I'll get in. All right, subs. Before I order this sandwich and forget to do it, we have a match in four days. Goodman, Masele, you're coming in. Um, Matros, you're coming in. Have fun, man. Um, who else gets tired easily? Mohamed Hassani is getting a little tired. Ilya Shkurin, you're coming out. You've had a good match, but La Paz is coming in, and we need him to play advance forward. Can't really press the same way that you do. And then we could go with Maseko and then just go Kermit. Everybody loves like a nice Kermit Erasmus cameo. Kermit, my dude, what's up? All right. Sandwich. Oh, no, it says it's going to take a while. Well, that's good. I'm getting it done now. Looks like sandwich spot's busy. Kermit. Oh, Maselle. Oh, this is gorgeous. Oh. <laughs> Gary, shut up. Whoa. Watch the bicycle kick, bro. We talked about it for like 20 minutes earlier on the stream. Who scored it again? Garnachos. I'm in China, and the highest fee paid in a transfer window is 40K. This league's falling off. Yeah, well, and this state stopped investing in it. Uh, and the state, you know, as, as much as they've opened things up, the state still kind of has got, you know, final say. The state had the project, and then they were like, wow, we're losing a lot of money. And I think, you know, the, it, 
the Chinese state had a bit of a hell, a bit less of a hell for leather approach than the Saudi state seems to have. But you know, we'll see how it plays out. Dang it, man. Literally just made all those changes, you know? And they come back and they score, and now we're gonna have to sweat out a 2-1 lead over Chippy United at home, guys. I had to get that ball clear. We did not get it clear, and we paid for it. That's got to be ours. That is cheese and crackers, and uh, what are you trying to see how far you can head it? All right, all right, all right, all right guys. All right, enough with this nonsense, right? They're hammering us on the right side. Sabizi's going to come back and play freaking defense now. You happy? Don't leave that spot, Sabisi. Away! Away! Can you try to bicycle kick? I didn't even see it. Literally didn't even see it. I'm blind. Blinded by his own chin. Dude, this is insane that this is still in the game. Like, I know that's salty of me to say because they just scored to tie it. But it is absolutely insane that that play is still in the game. Like, how do they watch that? And they're like, yeah, this is good. This is totally cool. Love this. I, I don't know. I have no idea. This was the uh, throw-in corridor of death. Like, look. So here we have, we've got two this time. We have two dudes. But the goalkeeper will never come out for this ball and they will always cross it. And honestly, the two dudes that I don't get to pick who they are are both really short. So they play it back, pop it in. That play is always open. It's always open. Sad. Man, we are electric today, aren't we? Nice play by Mayella. All right, Kermit. Maselle, literal traffic jam. What are you doing? Get in the box! What are you doing? Why are you checking back? No wonder it's crowded. My advance forward's like, I got it, man. I'm here. I'm so here. Back. Over. Over again. Do not dwell. Well, now you've ruined it. Now we got to go all the way back. Now you're going to give the ball away, actually, is what you're going to do. Somehow made it worse. What happens when you take an hour and a half? Clean. Good. Good play. All right, Kermit. This is actually a really nice spot for you. All right. Now run, La Pasta. Doesn't matter. We gave it away. All right, Matros. Goodness gracious me. Can we not for a second and a half? Oh, Kermit wants to win. Seriously, dude. All right, 10 minutes left. We're going to go into attacking. We've underscored our XG by a whole goal. Not again, Satan. Not again, Satan. All right. Or not. Please. I don't want to deal with extra time or whatever they got going for us. Just take it. We're going to get a chance here. Just take advantage of it. Oh, that was pretty. He's oh, ref. You could have. You could have. No, brother. Brother. You could have. Oh, we're still going. Kermit onside. Oh, Extra time, baby! Yeah! We're going to 
to be so tired for our league match coming up. That's what that makes me sad here. I think we'll win it next time, but we are going to be so tired for our league match. Oh, I feel like this is, we have 70% possession. This is the entire game. Oh. Just gave up two floating crosses to the back post. Corridor of death throw in. Big up to very attacking. I feel like that gives us even better chances uh, to score, and we're still more likely to score than they are. Improves our chance more than it improves theirs. Bro, with a little conviction, please. All right, Matros, Sorero, Inda, Sabizi. Get it to Sorero, dude. He's the guy that should be turn Good. I mean, there was a through ball there. We, we turned down a couple of opportunities to make a pass. All right, Erasmus. Like that from Kermit. What a shot. What a shot by Matros. Well, this is a, this is a, this is certainly one of the games of all time. Certainly. DRX, thank you for the four months. Thank you for supporting the channel, Dax. Thank you for the 14. I appreciate the prime. Ghost Smith, thank you so much for the prime, dude. Thanks for spending $5 of Jeff Bezos money. Serrero, Matros, we're moving. Christian Orr, thank you for the 18. Oh, my. Vic, thank you for the eight. And uh, Skin Reaper, ooh, spooky. Thank you for the year and a half. Congrats on your two Twitch children. Oh, get it! How is that even physically possible in the world of physics? Einstein, keep the ball down there, Sailor. Right, I'm going to put Goodman Maselle here as a shadow striker. Um, Serrero is just going to play as like a focal point, deep line playmaker. I'm going to try and find a way for him to, to work the ball further up. We, you know, our lines are as far up as they can be. We're obviously pressing to bring the ball back. Um, we're going to, I mean, long shots can be effective. I don't take that on. We're going to try and pass into space. If we can get after them quickly and get that ball into space, I want us to do it. All right, boys. All right, boys. Oh, pen. Dude. Mercifully call the pen here. Mercy pen. Oh, get in! Goal! It's a BC at the back post! And they have scored! Let's go! We got it! I want the wings to get back and support more. We're going double fullback on defend. Want to keep the lines high so they stay in their half of the field, but... <laughs> Big goal! Big goal by Sabisi! Oh, this drives me crazy. I need the director. Erasmus. Low driven ball gets through everybody, finds the fullback Sabisi, and it's a simple pass into the back of the net. Stanny's thank you for the 16 months. Once a dragon, always a pirate. We're the pirates now. You, you got it. Thank you for the 16. <laughs> we pirates. Serrero, play it. Montrose, yes. Kermit Erasmus. Kermit. Montrose. Oh, he's hitting this. Better hit than normal. Oh, ice it. In the game. All right, well, it's a cup. Survive in advance. We did not do this in a particularly pretty fashion. We were not efficient when it came to scoring goals. We were the exact opposite. Oh, that, that's the high line, though. Just not enough room for them to figure that out. That's perfect. Uh, La Passa, Dolly. Oh, there are options. Keegan Dolly. All right, let's wait. The Jack Sparrows. Yes. 
Rich Steele, thank you for the 14 months, dude. I appreciate the prime sub. I'll hit it, son. Get in. They might flag a random offside here. Oh, no. Goal! They're just calling it known goal. That might be an unfortunate... Uh... No, that's on target. What are you saying? That's more of a goal than Ilya Shkurin's first goal in this game. I'm going to rob Serrero of the goal. Hey, we won. Hey, we won. We freaking won. Sweet. Got to win. I do. We have 4.48 XG in that game. Should have probably not gone to extra time there, but we were creative enough. I think we played really well, and we just we left it late. But we played really well. All right, I want to uh, I want to rest some guys, make sure they're available for the Kaiser Chiefs match. That's what we need to do. Okay, I'm checking my food. We're good. Awesome. Everything's going through. Serrero reached a yellow card limit. Those were just invented by the man to try and keep him down. Don't let the dreams die, Serrero. All right, so I'm going to go with Maela, Sabisi, and Enda are going to get three days of rest just to make sure they're 100% ready to go. Keegan Dolly, you're going to get two days. But I'm also probably going to sub you out at some point in the match, so... Don't worry about it. Then we got to wait to Super Sport after this. Another Soweto Derby? So soon? Oh, Kermit Erasmus just played like a full extra time match and then showed up for the reserves the next day. I think he's going to be match sharp now, boss. Why, why, why do we have fixture congestion? I was specifically promised there would be no fixture congestion in friggin' South Africa, and now I have fixture congestion. Like, back-to-back -back days of fixture congestion that are going to cause problems for me. Oh, Ilya's face. Right. Oh, I already have it uh, penned at the bottom. Okay, so we need Ilya's face. Just a moment. We got to go to our FM folder, go to faces, go to custom faces. Oh, we got to go to Ilya. Hi, Ilya. Oh, I don't have your number up. My bad. Can I get your number? Hey, yo, Ilya. Can I get your number? Yes. All right. Ilya, you are... Oh, excuse me. Wait, do I need to convert the image? Oh, no. It's a WEBP file. What in the... Uh, JLab literally already sent it to me. Oh, that's his latest picture? Oh, but I don't like his latest picture. That's his latest picture? He looks like, it looks like Buzz Lightyear has seen, he's seen some shit, you know? <laughs> Ilya's going through it right now. Ilya seen so okay, all right, all right, all right. That's the PNG and it's already numbered, so that's the one we're using. Graphics, faces, custom faces. That's that's Il dude Ilya Shkurin. He's he's been through the wars, man. He's been through the wars. Ilya Shkurin, he's seen he's seen the other side. All right, now we've got our FMXML that we can write our script real quick. We're gonna drag that in there. All file names or IDs. Crank that. All right, then let's take caching off and reload, shall we? What you got, Ilya? A drinking problem, apparently. Cup quarterfinal. Dude, I'm playing Kaiser Chiefs in everything. Every single tournament. Cup final in the MTN. Be the coach challenge. The league, obviously. And now the telecom quarterfinal, Kaiser Chiefs, the Soweto Derby in every competition. Buzz Lightyear. A minus. Excellent dad joke.
Somebody drop it in with the buzzed light year. Yes. He is buzzed light year. All right, a Soweto Derby in the Telecom quarterfinal. I mean, yeah, that's what the people want. The people want to see as many Soweto Derbies as possible, and we're just here to provide. We are just here to provide. But this fixture congestion going to get annoying. Wait, whoa, what just happened? Oh, yeah, I'm playing Kaiser Chiefs. Okay. And then that is the set. Dude, we have, like, legitimate fixture congestion for a while. That is so annoying. I have three league matches in a week including Kaiser Chiefs and Amazulu. That's frustrating. I thought this was, you know, this was and has been a league where I didn't have to worry about that nonsense, like fixture congestion. I was able to just play my best team, build my best 11. I think we can handle it. But uh, maybe that's when the league starts to spice up. That's when the good teams in the league start to drop points. So if we can stay hot, we'll be all right. I'll try and flip this into a positive. When things, you know, when things are grim, be the Grim Reaper. I'm going to be the Grim Reaper. I'm going to own the fixture congestion that we're running straight into now. Ah, a youth team goalkeeping coach. Always unnecessary, but sure, why not? The Black Leopards are doing all right. They're in seventh. We built a team to last. Tux, the other team that got promoted, is in dead last. Black Leopards is in seventh. They are actually only five points off of us, and we have a match in hand. We'll be fine. We'll separate from them by the end of the year, but they're cooking. I'm really proud of my old club. I'm just glad they didn't go right back down. I would have felt like such a jerk if they just went right back down. Uh, wow, youth, uh, youth team winger. Two months with a dislocated shoulder. Yikes. Some serious injuries flying around. All right, we do have a full first team available. Um. Oh, yeah, Serrero is suspended, so we're going to have to put Masales on the field, which is going to open things up for a winger. Uh, a Tabizo Kurumela, who is back, which, thank the heavens, um, might have been back for the last match. I might have just completely forgotten and not played him. That is entirely possible. So Tabizo Kudumela, Maseko, Ilyashkuren, Saavedra Zungu, Masalesa, Husseini, Maela, uh, Olisa, Inda, Sabisi, and Ali Ahamada. And we are playing in the biggest derby in South Africa, the Soweto Derby, Orlando Pirates, Kaiser Chiefs. And we have dominated it. We beat them in the We the Coach, uh, Be the Coach Challenge, the season opening tournament. We beat them in the MTN Cup. This is the first time we're playing them in the league. That's what it's all about. This is what it is all about is playing in a match like this. You grow up in South Africa? This is where you want to be. Soweto Derby. Let's get it. We're all pirates today. Go out there and enjoy yourselves, and I'm going to hit you with the eye of faith in you right now. Shkurin's buying in, dude. This is a very important match. Stadium is packed for the Soweto Derby. Can you believe this is just the second year of our journeyman? We're already on a stage like this. <sighs> Studying for my national A license as a coach. Let's get it, baby. Big moments in the season. Gonna need Maseko to be prime time. It's all a little give and go. Oh, no. yeah, 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 yeah. He went for it and missed. If you go for that, can't miss. Oh, that's fine. Manu, thank you for the six months. I agree. And thank you for spending $5 of Jeff Bezos' money. I agree completely. And congrats on your silver bacon. Nice step by Maela. Maela, the center back, the ball playing center back, leading the break. 
He's got Maseko. Maseko should have this guy. I mean, the pace, the raw pace of Maseko, always a problem. Oh, Shkurin. That would have uh, just deflected. Okay. Let's get it. Let's get it, boys. Oh. Then Vic. No! It was a good start. It was a good start to the match. We just got to keep our head up. We'll get it. Oh, it was a dive, ref. I can't believe you've tarnished a derby like this with a, you know, calling a dive like that. The away end's going crazy. We're going into the away end right now. Who wants to be the hero that's shushing the crowd? And too many people collapse on that ball. Come on, Shkurin, we need you. A little more in his face right here. Uh, a little more in his face. All right, Ben Wick. Keeper's there. Thank you. All right, Amida. Where's Ilya? That's not Ilya. Oh, Maseko did a really good job with that. Very surprisingly. Saavedra, Shkurin. Ilya Shkurin. Oh, smart. Smart not to shoot it. Oh, he resets. Ilya! Oh, Buzz Lightyear. Nearly. Keep it up, boys. I like the way we're playing right now. Maseko. Hosseini. Zungu. Oh, Shkurin with a beautifully bent run. Oh, and it's Savedra. <laughs> We're running. We're off and running, baby. Oh, that's just a wonderful run. Good shot. Forces the save. Savedra. Fits it through the defender's legs. Excellent response in the derby. Irwin Saavedra. Hosseini. Oh, he had Shkurin. Oh, Ilya Shkurin. Saavedra. Oh, it's in. Oh, come on. No. Wow, that was wide open. That just broke wide open. That is awesome. Um, all right, Masalesa, Sweet, Saavedra, Maela, Husaini. Oh, he should have gone inside. We had all the space in here. Zungu. Oh, Maseka with the pace, causing problems. They got out of it. Dang it. Oh, but that's ours. That high line, man. We're all over him. We built our team to play this way, and we. Zungu. Why are you trying to make that pass? Maela's got this covered. We just got to watch for the cross. Then Vike. Okay. Nobody's over there. Right. Maela. No, nobody fill. Or wait. Yeah. Sabisi filled in. But why is, why is Hussaini that far in? That's on Hosseini, dude. Why is Hosseini that far up? Well, we act, Sabizi actually tucked in nicely. We had a back four where they were supposed to be, except for Hosseini. It's got to be closer to that guy. He just, he's, he, like, he wasn't even acknowledging the fact that there might be people coming down that side. Oh! I'm gonna try and get it before the half. I'm going into attack. Because we've been all over them in this game. They have a penalty and their XG is 1.04. We've been all over them. All right, Kudamela, Shkurin. Ilya. Feeling it. Ilya's feeling it. Oh, that is such a waste. Come on, boys. Let's get it before the half. Let's spend the second half chasing a winner. All right.
wait, Sabisi. Yes, attack that space. No, don't turn. All right, Hussaini. Shkurin. No, man. Our instincts in finishing the final third have been terrible today. Like, really terrible. Really bad. Like, what is that? We, we keep... Our XG should be even higher than it is. We're working our way into good positions. But we're not... Yeah, okay. Hold on. I'm going to turn on work the ball in the box the second half. I am going to make a tactical change. Because <sighs> we're getting in a lot of great positions, but we're shooting too early. We need to make one more pass than we're making. That's what that button's for. Man. There? No! What the hell? Oh, I thought we were dead in the water. How do you get beat by that? Oh, this is this is brutal in a derby to have this kind of FMing going on. We need to turn this. We need to turn this. Maseko. Forgot the ball. Nice move, though. It's all right. Maseko's going to get there. He's the fastest guy in the league. Just keep running, dude. Oh, Savedra! Bra, 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 bra. Basilessa. Oh, nice move. Oh, he went out. Okay, we'll take a corner. We got big guys, Inda and uh, Ilya Shkurin, mainly. Oh, that was such a good delivery. That was actually a wonderful delivery. Right, let's keep it going. I know, dude. Man, it's highlights all over the place. Really, guys? Really? All right, bring it down. Good. Near side. Okay, guys, I still think we can win this game, but let's let's get going, dude. It's fine. They they can't hook that up. That's fine. El Hamid is a brilliant um, player with the ball. No, oh, they want you to go wide. Then go wide. Somebody's open. Kudamela. Oh, see you later. Oh, he said, see you later. I hate how that ends up being Sabisi. That should be Kudamela with Sabisi out wide, but we keep ending up with the inverse where my fullback's the guy that's like freaking shooting it. It's a great time for my food to get here. Hello?
My dude was confused. I got him sorted out though. He's stuck in a sinkhole? No. I do need to make some subs though. <sighs> Kermit. Kermit, you're in. Sorry, I totally ran that. To, to Pella Morena, you're in. Uh, Zungu's not playing well. We'll drop him and bring in uh, Goodman Maselle. He's got good goal scoring traits. Okay. Three subs. Here we go. Lord, thank you for the nine months. Appreciate you supporting the channel. Pigeon, thank you for the prime. Thank you for being part of the elite online gaming community. <laughs> oh, I like it. I like it a lot. I hate the shot. So I was just making sure that I saw what I saw. You know, sometimes you got to watch something a few times to confirm for your own brain that what you just witnessed was what actually happened. So I, you, you know, let's, just watch it one more, let's just watch it one more time. In a game we've utterly dominated. All right. All right. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, sick. Thanks. Really? Ilya Shkurin, right when I'm about to go into this giant set of fixture congestion and my other striker just got hurt on international duty. That's tough. Oh, nice pass by Saavedra. Lapasa, Erasmus, somebody. Zungu, or at least Erwin can hit the target. This is insane, dude. A very frustrating game. I can't believe uh, Husseini can play further up, but I guess Morena can play further up too, so we'll do that. I think both these guys can play strikers, so we're just going to go with two deep-lying forwards on either side. You ready to get weird? Because we are so totally about to get weird. Look at that formation. We're winning it all. Oh, score it, Irwin. Oh, I knew we got to win the Soweto Derby. Nice play. Nice. Oh, my goodness, dude. He's off. He was off. He was off. He was off. He was offside. He was offside. How is he not on? Like, how is he not offside, dude? The dude is just like. What are you doing? Even still, he's offside. They're not calling it, though.
32 shots to six, and we lost three to one. Not 32 shots to 2.6 XG is not that bad. My normal line of whether you're creating good chances or not is you get 0.1 XG per shot. We were working at like 0.008. Or sorry, 0.08. Wow, we are uh, we are dominating the flow of matches and not being able to win them, and that was a particularly brutal loss. Uh, groin strain, Ilya Shkren's out for a month. Um, have talk against Kaiser Chiefs was too hard on the team. Are you serious? That's like your actual opinion? Well, that's great. Um, you're oh, wait, hold on. It's And also my captain and team leader. I'll be honest, I've never had to deal with this before, except for the 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 beta save. I'm just going to apologize and get behind a promise, apparently. I know your eyes don't deceive you. Dude, I I can't believe we lost that game. I really I really can't believe we lost that game. We don't have Ilya Shkurin for a month. This is um this is going to be a crucible in the season. We have lost consecutive league matches, both by just getting absolutely screwed. Now, I've never tried the promise route with the team talk thing before, so I wanted to try it. Oh, I'm going to reduce the number of unhappy players of the club. I'll be able to hit that promise easily because most of those unhappy players already have transfers agreed. They just haven't left yet. Like, Roddy Apane has a deal agreed. He just hasn't left. And then there's two other guys that are not available right now. Kim Vuidi and Saibu Maru both have transfers agreed that are going to go through on in January. So I think we'll be fine. Uh, it's because we don't have an anchor. I did see somebody say that, and I'm like, dude, for most of the match, we did. We just, uh, we had to switch it up there. Ma Celesa. I'm going gonna, gonna to take Dortley off. I'm going to take Sabia off. I'm going to take Sabia off. I have Ma Celesa available so we can do a full midfield switcheroo if we need to. 
We do have a day until the match tomorrow, which is nice. We're going to take all them people off. There we go. Three league losses, though, is tough in a 30-game season. Probably can only lose, like, one more if we want to win the league. We're going to have to bring it. We've got Amazulu at home. This is a trap game because Amazulu is coming up after it. Check a fatso back in training, but he probably won't be back for weeks. Zwane's back in training as well. We would love to have him. That dude is never not hurt. We signed him when he had a torn Achilles. First reserve match back from the torn Achilles. Toast. Nothing. All right. La Pasa, you are an advance forward when you're playing. That's what you're going to do. And then we are down to reserve uh, player Lorenzo Shy as our backup striker. Okay. Anybody else tired? Um, Hosseini's just going to go ahead and get a break today. We are going to go get Sabia and put him in there. And we are also going to go get Morena and put him in for Sabisi on the right side. Dortley in for Nda. Keegan Dolly's playing. Zungu, you're off. Erwin Saavedra gets the start. Serrero can play the next two matches because he was out, but that's what I'm going with. I'm going to go with Matros and Saavedra. That's a better team. Okay. And I don't have to worry about setting up set piece stuff because the set pieces are fixed. So problems abound. Let's find ourselves a win. Problems abound. Let's find a dub. A way to Super Sport United. We need three points. Right now. Spapa, thank you for the 23 months. Thanks for supporting the channel. Thanks for spending $5 of Jeff Bezos money. Looking forward to your diamond bacon next month. Sino Moore, thank you for the four months. Welcome back. Been living off the VODs. I'm sorry about the one I accidentally got like super duper muted recently. Damp. I realized I was eating and going through an emotionally traumatic rivalry defeat the first time we didn't win the Soweto Derby. But thank you so much for the five gifted subs. It really means a lot. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you for doing it by making five people's days. Uh, I hope everybody was able to say thank you while I was going through it. But you are awesome, Damp. Thank you. Does the sign this player really work? It's a suggestion. You can't force me to sign a player. Usually it's used like when we're scouting somebody and they pop up and then chat spams like sign this player. You know what I mean? Because they want me to sign that player, but you know. As you as you have rightly figured out, Invictus, 500 channel points to force me to sign a player would be a little broken. Oi.
Come on, Maseko. Come on, Maseko. Keep running. Right, I get it. That's why I'm offering one billion dollars. If you want to pay me a billion dollars to sign a player in the game, I will do it. What's on the sandwich, Mr. Manager? Uh, chicken stuffing, uh, cranberry sauce. It's a Thanksgiving-themed sandwich. I've been hooked on it recently. Don Eglia, thank you so much for the prime, dude. Thanks for spending five dollars of Jeff Bezos money. We have not been as dominant in this game as I've, as I was hoping we would be. Oh, there we go. Good man, Maselle, Morena, Keegan Dolly. Oh, I love getting that to Irwin Savedra. Sabia. How's the season going? Uh, honestly, every tournament except for the league is going great. The league, we've just hit a few hook, uh, a few hiccups. about time he's supposed to be this great goalkeeper it's about time go make a play to help us out here because we are we, you know they have 0.1 xg the first 40 minutes and then of course we give away a pen oh maseko <laughs> about time ahamada oh jeez man Got to get Saavedra at 60 because we got the next match coming up against Amazulu. Come on, dude. Come on. We've gotten so many corners. We got to be able to put them away, man. It's a bad delivery. He completely missed the target. Fabregas, thank you so much. Up the Pirates. Let's get a goal now. Up the Pirates. Let's get a goal. Dolly. Dolly. Still Keegan Dolly. Still Keegan. Thank you. It's that easy. It's the Kelly LaPasta, and it's 1-0. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, honestly, do we need to bring in Zulu? Our shooting is terrible. Uh, Machos, since we have the lead. Um... All right, that's it. That's it. We're only up one nothing. I'm not going to go super crazy like, oh, I need to rest the whole team. Serrero. Oh! Oh! Tulani Serrero. Oh, 
Oh, he caught that. It took a little skip and deflection, but he caught that. Sweet. Hit that right on the button. Hit that right on the nose. Thank you and good night from Super Sport United. Deflection on that one. What a smack by Tulani Morena. From some way out, he liked his odds and hit it absolutely perfectly. The first goal of the season for Morena. And he might get a bit more playing time after that one. Holy crackers. Get a couple of the guys that we think are going to play against Amazulu in a couple of days. Oh, nice pass, dude. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Well done. Well done. That is what I'm talking about. Three days and then Amazulu at home. We took care of the trap game. We got the win. Uh, a lot of teams have a match in hand on us, but we are. We're trying. Amazulu's played 10 league matches and won nine of them. So this is a real opportunity to bring Amazulu crashing back down to earth here. Planning on winning an African Champions League or moving before that? I, I, I have no idea. Right now, I'm trying to keep my freaking job. So, as if I spend too much time in eighth in the league, I won't be here very long. So, first priority, let's not lose to Kaiser Chiefs again and then keep my job. That sounds like a great idea. We've got that cup quarterfinal against Kaiser Chiefs coming up after the Yamazulu match. Because, of course, we do. All these matches without Ilyash Gurren, without Shegafat Sumabasa. Uh, you know, this is like the busiest month of South African football. And we are just crushed by an injury to probably our best player. More quickness training. When? Dude, I hate when they say that. When are we going to do it? We got a match every five seconds. When are we doing it? Ah, oh, sorry. That'd be quickness, and then we'll get a physical recovery there, try and mitigate any potential damage. Okay, I don't think there's going to be anything paradigm shifting here. Siabonga Malinga hanging out in the U21s. No, he'll, he'll hang out there. He's a good player. All right, got through that. No problem. Life is good. Time to get a nice return if you're a, if you're a doubter. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. There's no doubters in this chat. Everybody only bets for us to win. Everybody only bets for us to win ever.
get an update on my um, my short lists here so we can remove some guys. Because we have an actual scouting department that can keep my short lists up to date. Well, you know, Tommy Mkise, actually, you know, if we need a center back in January, he is not a bad six-month rental. It's bad boy time? No, it is not. We're playing the best team in the league, a team that has won nine of their first ten matches with the other being a draw. We have won seven of our first ten with three defeats, so it's not like we're way off their pace. And I think if you look at the XG table, which I am scared to look at, I'm going to look at it. But it's kind of like looking at ruins, you know? They're like, wow, look at what could have been. So we're basically as good as Amazulu. This will be a good match. Freaking sixth. Ridiculous, dude. Ridiculous. All these sorry teams that think they're better than us. They'll know by the end of the year. They'll know what's up. Bad boy could pull off a master class. I don't know. We got to save him. We save him for specific moments where he can take over. When Shigafatso back, three days. Dang it. He still won't be available for the cup match either. How long Zwane got? Two to four weeks. All right. He's basically getting back when Shkurin gets back. Fun. Sick. All right. Alhamada, Sabisi, Inda, Maela, Husseini, Serrero, Saavedra, Zungu, Kudumela, Maseko, Lapasa. That's our team. That's what we got. That is basically all we've got. Okay. Got to beware of uh, if this is a shadow striker that they're running. Things could get tricky for our center backs, but we're at home. I'm going to come out and hey, we've had to cheat our opponent in every game this season. So we're going to come out and execute the way that I think we can. Go out there and be yourself tonight. I'm looking at you, Maseko. You don't want to get all nervous. All right. Amazulu time. Hosting the league leaders. Amazulu FC. The type of match that if we win, could set our season back on that rocket ship to the top. Our goal right at the beginning of the year, win every competition we're playing in, even though it's only my second season in management here. Win every competition we're playing in. That was the goal. What we need is that when we get opportunities, if we're in control of the game, we've we got to score. Maseko. Ah, why are you cutting in, brother? Why are you cutting in? That's not... I didn't see if I can get him to stop doing that. Run ride with the ball. You got it. You got to... You, no. Do not run in with the ball. Run wide with the ball. And we've been made to pay for it. Nice, dude. Freeze, thank you for the 15 months. Way to catch yourself. Oh, keep us there. We're good. All right. 
Let's go, baby. Ahamada. Where are we going? Okay, maybe not the best move. Oh, La Pasa. I don't think you can... Oh, wow. That is just an unbelievably bad giveaway. See, we're on our third string striker. That hurt right there. Outlet, thank you for the 25 months. That is a long time. I appreciate you supporting the channel, dude. Beautiful. Very rarely do I make a hand motion and they actually pass it exactly where I'm thinking they should. But that was exactly where I was thinking they should. This is better. He needs to just give this to Serrero. He's right in front of him and has the quality to open this play up. There we go. Oh, there you go. There you go. Come on. Come on. There you go. That's what we're supposed to look like. Thank you very much. Erwin Saavedra, La Passa, is a good goal scorer. We're going to need him to be a good goal scorer without our two strikers. Come on, man. We're better than that. I know we're better than that. Let's just go play our game. All right. Usaini, you gave up on that a little too fast for my taste. Good catch. All right, I like the highlight. Dude, this is ridiculous, man. That's Erwin Saavedra down. Next man up, Goodman, Maselle. Yeah, they're just taking out exclusively our best players now. Shkurin and now Saavedra. Are you kidding me? Good middle. No, 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 no. Now it won't be open. Serrero. Or we go for the super complex one. All right. I've had enough of this. He needs to be the focal point. You need to get him the ball. You need to get him the ball. Then we can go to the wingers, but you got to get him the ball first. If we just go to the wingers, they can kind of create a wall, and unless we can hit that three pass combination which we're not good enough to be able to hit that consistently then they're going to just be able to shut us into one side of the field we got the ball we need the focal point to be Serrero he needs to get the ball all right we've got our one-on-one -on -one. I hope they just don't cross it thank you appreciate it uh, all right. I can live with that. I can we 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 can live with that. Can you wish the borough good luck tonight? Ah, oh, Maddie, you know I would, but I can't pick sides, right? I miss your skin. When's it coming out? Uh soon. We just there there've been some hiccups for the people that have been helping construct the skin in terms of their hardware. Just unfortunate sort of stuff you can't predict. All right, Maseko. Oh, yes! Come on! <laughs> League leaders, what? This is the type of match we needed. We're not getting a ton of chances, but we are taking advantage of the opportunities when they're here. Big play by Kudamela. Yes. Maseko's brilliant pace actually worked. All right, all right, all right, all right. Run, run. Run, 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 buddy, run.
Honestly, considering how well they constructed that, we defended that about as well as I could hope we would. I know to put him on pressing forward. Got to keep the energy in our legs. We can't let them get it into that half space either side of our defensive midfielder with their first pass. That we get opened up too easily if they get there. And we let them get there twice in that buildup. Like this area and this area, if they get the ball there with their direct pass from the center back, we're in trouble. All right, let's go, boys. Come on. Laid off. Good. Oh, Sorero. Yo, I actually didn't hate that plan. Nice play by Miss L.A. Kudumela in space. Looking to dance. Sabisi always missing that shot, but always willing to take it, frustratingly enough. Well, this has been a fun first half. It's going to be a big time second half, too. Sabisi, that is really well done. All right, Maela. Okay, we need. Not that, dude. That's not his game. It's not what we want Maseko to have to be doing. But our defense has been good. Again, right positions. Took away the potential counter. I like my center backs. Keep. I finally get to say something happy to my team, so I'm going to take it, although I'm not, like, fully satisfied with our performance. I am going to lower the tempo and add time wasting. He's so fast, dude. Why do I not have pass in a sp I do have pass in a space on. Never mind. He's so fast. It looked like there was no chance he was getting to that ball. That's fine. Sorero, brilliant anchoring play there. And that's th this is the kind of buildup we want, where Sorero's open and we can lay it back to him. What a terrible ball by Kudamela. Jeez. Zungu with the bailout. Get it to Zungu. There you go. Maseko. Hate that he's there, but actually nice pass. Kudamela. Kudamela. Oh! Hot diggity dog. Yeah, I thought he was Maseko there for a second. Thought he could get to that ball. Great work. Maela, an unsung hero. That Just go. Just go. There's no way this guy can knock ball past opponent. Just go. Oh, my goodness. So frustrating sometimes. Only this was FIFA and I could just hold down the button. That's fine. Crowded out the one striker. We get the ball back. We can take our time or we can't. Masele Zungu! Ah, oh, decent. You know, it's not bad. It's not bad. Let's take a look at our bench. Get a 6.4 for Hussaini. We could bring in Rushwin Dortley and just drop Maseko and just play with Dortley out here. I think I'm going to do that. No, oh, that's stupid. We're inviting too much pressure if we do that. I'm going to keep him a little deeper, though. I'm going to keep him on wing back and defend. So he's not pushing up quite as far. I have Matros. We did have to make the one sub in the first half. I have Kermit, Erasmus. Now, I think, I'm thinking this might be a no, it might be a one sub type of game just for the injury. XG is dead even, but we've gotten more possession in the second half. We're winning a lot of the momentum graph in the second half. 
we've definitely been better when we're playing shorter passes. Kind of keeping this game under control here. It's all right. Recover to him. Recover to him. We've got guys. Uh... So he was tired. Um, Montrose is coming in for Zungu. Kudamela out for Keegan Dolly. And Talani Serrero is tired. I, You're going to stay. You've been immense today. You're staying. So, wait, 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 wait. Give pep talk. I have faith in you. Doesn't matter, apparently, but... I have faith in you. Believe in yourself. Away. Well, that's mine. Let's go. Near side. No? Okay, cool. Love that for us. Oh, this would be really helpful if you could score this right now. I feel like this game's been going on for an hour. I've lived three lifetimes in this match. This is... It's hard to overstate the importance of this match for it being the 11th match of a 30-game season. For some reason, I thought that might be floating in. That's what he's for! Ali Ahavada! Brilliant goalkeeping. The wild man flying out there. That golden jersey streaking in from the side. Oh, what a header by Lapasa. Oh my goodness, Matros. Oh my goodness! What a moment! What an unexpected goal! What an unexpected moment of brilliance from Azola Matros! At full tilt, all the way home, Pirates 3, Amazulu 1. Oh, it's the substitute! Sub, Dortley, you're in. Uh, full back on defend. All right. Uh, I'm going to get Serrero and just have you, since we have a two-goal lead, you're just going to be a ball winner, Masalesa. Use your fresh legs to close down space, not give them anything to work with. Perzak, thank you for the two months. Thanks for supporting the channel with $5 of Jeff, Be of Jeff Bezos's money. Words. I do appreciate it. Matros bringing home the bacon. Absolutely. Love that. That was a big time goal. What a run, too. It's just rare in FM and in real, you know, guys that just go, yeah, I'm going to run full speed. I'm going to pick this up. I'm going full speed. Somebody stop me if you can. That a beautiful shot. Oh, he's gone. He's gone. Be gone. Be the wind, Maseko. Uh, I mean, he did a good job of finding an open guy. So Amazulu had played 10 matches. They had won nine and drawn the other. Their first league defeat... Orlando Pirates, baby. We are so back. Oh. Oh. That was almost a great play. La Passa. Oh, my goodness. It's all right. He did enough. Tied him up. Laza, thank you so much for the prime. Thanks for supporting the channel with your Twitch prime. $5 a jet. What's he doing? A little 360 back here? Oh, he was just drawing in the defender distracted him so he could open up a passing lane. Man's a genius. All right, he's shooting. Oh, come on! Oh, stop it right now. It's the other substitute, Goodman Maselle, with a beautiful goal. And Amazulu will reserve their first defeat of, of, of the season. And they will receive it brutally at the hands of the Orlando Pirates. 
The masculine urge to shout, we are so back, five seconds after it was all over. We lose the Soweto Derby 3-1 after outshooting them 32-6. We get two big injuries to our best players, and we are waxing top of the league Amazulu 4-1 at home. Handing them their first defeat of the season. This is why we play. Colbs, thank you for the year. Congrats on your golden bacon. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. It means a lot. Oh, the, yeah, these are the goals for the Kaiser Chiefs match. That's so true. Man, we had some beautiful strikes in that match. I am very happy with the way we played. Absolutely tremendous overall team performance. And uh, yeah, we've tucked ourselves into fourth. Just four points off the top of the league with the best goal difference in the league. We got that going for us. We got Kaiser Chiefs in three days. All right, it's a groin strain three to four weeks for Saavedra. So we have Saavedra, Shkurin, um, Swane has been out the whole freaking year. Shegafatso Mabasa is going to hopefully at least be on the bench for the next match. Uh, let's check our fitness. As a person who's watching the regular season of the NBA, what do you think of the end season tournament? It is an obvious, transparent, and hilarious attempt to copy something like the FA Cup. Um, that being said, I think it's kind of fun. I wish they would open it up similar, you know, similarly to the way that the FA Cup works, where, you know, more than just teams in the NBA. Um, that would be nice. But I'm not in charge. So Saavedra's out. That means Goodman Maselli is in. And Tapello Morena is going to be in. He's basically a winger playing right back. So we're going to have Gregory Damons come up so he can help see the match out. Actually, we're going to go with uh, Impalele. Yeah, I'll be fine. Um, also have another sub spot open. Shigafatso Mabasa should hopefully be in that spot, but he should hopefully be in that spot. And then Lorenzo Shai is gone, and we do actually have another opening uh, where I'll have Sabia. I'll just have another defensive sub that can come in and be creative and go forward all right hopefully we are fit and ready for this kaiser chiefs match i'm trying to rest our guys so that we can get through it but only so many things we can do here got a shout out to independiente del valle being named the 10th best youth setup in the in the uh, world huge use bad boy i don't know man i don't know if this is a bad boy moment you know i don't know if this is a bad boy moment have you ever discussed the fever proposal to trial 10 minute sin bins in professional football for cynical fouls or dissent i i'm gonna be honest I know where most of you probably stand on this. I know. I mean, like, come on. I, I know where most of you probably stand on this. I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. I think there should be something in between a red card and a freaking free kick, right? There are certain red cards where you deserve to be sent off the field for the entire match. But let's be honest with ourselves. Most red cards, they're not that. And nothing, evidenced by Chelsea Tottenham, nothing ruins a match faster than a red card, right? And I get the argument like, well, if you don't want to ruin the match and make it harder for your team, don't get a red. But like, if it was that easy, then nobody would ever get a red card, right?
I think another, I'll be honest. While we're at like just issues, I think that if they were addressed, would make the game better. I think the box in which penalties are awarded is too big. I think it encourages flopping, which makes the game inherently less fun to watch because people will get into the edge of the box and then act like they've been shot by a sniper when they have no clear path to goal or any obvious way to create a goal scoring chance. And yet they will still be able to draw a penalty. And so they are incentivized competitively to try to draw the penalty because that is their best chance to score a goal from the position they are in at that point. So if, you, if, if I'm king of the world, I'm adding a 10 minute red card to the game. Is there anything that removes most of the red cards that ruin matches? You know, that probably don't deserve to ruin matches. Like I said, sometimes there are red cards where the player absolutely deserves to be sent off for the whole match. I'm just saying, if, I, if I'm king of the world, I'm changing those two things. I'm saying, yeah, you want a penalty? You get fouled like obvious goal scoring opportunity in the 18 yard box, or you get fouled in the six yard box. And that's a penalty. And if you get fouled in the 18 yard box, it's indirect. Well, I want to read what you're, uh, hold on, what you're responding to. I'm going to open this thread. It allows attackers to play, wait, hold on, play more freely and get more goals by inhibiting defenders from going all in on the ball. In my experience, that is the exact opposite of what's happening. I think that the size of the area in which you can draw a penalty and the fact that you cannot be threatening to score a goal at all but draw a penalty, which is a .8 you know, it's an 80% chance to score a goal just off the drop. That that hurts the game. Defenders are afraid. Every time they're in the box, they're running around with their arms stapled behind their back. Right? It just looks weird. It feels weird. And they're just, and everybody's going down all the time with their hands in the air. If you're not going to draw a penalty, you're more likely to try and, I don't know, put the ball in the back of the net. It's not the size of the box, the implementation. No, they, I mean, the rules say if you commit a foul inside the box, it's a penalty. So I don't, I don't think it's the implementation. It, you know, it's not the application of that one rule. That's the rule. I, I think that the referee should be able to go, that was an obvious goal scoring opportunity. Like the dude was about to shoot and you fouled him. So that's a penalty inside the 18. Or if anybody is fouled inside the six, that's a penalty. And then let's just keep going on with our lives. So that would give the that would give the refs something to evaluate and they mess things up a lot. The refs are making more like the refs are already making those decisions. What do you think a red card decision is? Like a red card decision has arguably more influence on the game than that. Oh, good save. The refs already have a hard job. It's not going to get any easier. Everybody's trying to make it easier. We just need to get better refs. Like, train people better to do that job. Maseko, what in God's green earth are you doing, man? Being a referee is unimaginably difficult. It's so hard to do that job. I don't blame people that don't do it well all the time. The refs also already make that decision. If it's the denial of an obvious goal scoring opportunity, it's a straight red. That's a rule. The refs already have to make that determination. So if you're making that determination, you might as well go, well, that also means it's a penalty instead of a very high chance of scoring indirect free kick, you know? I don't know. This, this is also like, this isn't actually going to happen. I'm not expecting this to ever happen. I'm just trying to come up with my off the cuff way to make the game more enjoyable. I 
Oh, if it's a straight red. Honestly, two yellows. I feel like the ref has even more say. It's not reviewable by VAR. And especially a lot of times the... F oh, nice header! Goal! A lot of times that first yellow is suspect, dude. <laughs> a lot of times that first yellow card... And, like, if you ever look at, like, two yellows that make up a red, the second one will be like, yeah, of course, he had no choice but to give him a yellow. But the first yellow card will be, like, some random call. But I'm going to be honest. As an American, somebody that has replay in every sport we have, and it, you know, it's used a lot. You guys are doing VAR wrong. You guys are doing replay wrong. Ollie, you can you can leave that sort of thing up. I don't think a mass is being that mean to me. He just said stop talking stupid, which is like a fair take. I obviously don't think I'm talking stupid. So if you think I'm talking stupid, tell me why it's stupid other than eh, he's getting American accent. That must mean he's wrong. You know, nice finish. I mean, Soweto Derby, dude. We dominate the Soweto Derby. I know we lost the last one, three one, but we outshot them 32 to six. We've got to be better than Kaiser Chiefs. Oh, my goodness. Fine, I'll shut up. Sorry, Dylan. One card, it's never random. The first one's the hardest one to give. That I mean, that's just not, that's not true at all. I was watching, I went to the U.S. versus Trinidad and Tobago match, and the first yellow card that was given to the guy that was eventually sent off for two yellow cards was a terrible call. The dude went for a roulette and got taken out by Weston McKinney, and he got a card for stepping on Weston McKinney's leg when Weston McKinney promptly injected himself under the roulette and cleaned the guy out. And the guy got a yellow card for that. I mean, that, 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 that's just wrong, right? But replay in the U.S. is challenge-based right there are certain things that are always replayed but in the united states it's challenge based i think it should be challenge based in uh in, in football i think it should be challenge based because that makes it what the challenge does i think it's i do think it's fairer i think challenge based is fairer because you can't blame the refs as much you still can don't get me wrong been blaming it my whole life but it's more fair because you can't blame the refs, right? You have the challenge. If you use your challenge and lose the challenge, then you can't challenge later in the match. And then you know what all you know you know what else would be awesome about that? We would get the moment back. Because I think it, we're we're kind of afraid to admit this because we all acknowledge that VAR. Not a, maybe not all of us. VAR should exist in some sense. It should. VAR should exist. You don't want a ball to you know to go in and some dude's obviously offside, but they miss the call and that changes history forever. He was off. We don't want that. Nobody wants that. But what we've given up in order to have VAR is that when a goal is scored, we don't get to celebrate immediately. We've lost that moment. That moment is gone. So that's a bad call on the ref side. Ivan, that is specifically what we're talking about. We are talking about when it's a bad call on the ref side. Not what the refs are taught to do, but what, yeah. So, sorry, I didn't finish the thought. We get that moment back. That moment where the ball goes in and everybody looks at the linesman and the flag isn't up and you go, ah, I remember 2014, the John Jones goal. I couldn't believe it went in. And I was like, I had to wait a second to see if the linesman was calling anything. And I'm like, okay, we scored. This is amazing. Now, the only time you wouldn't have that moment 
is when the manager on the other team goes challenge. Take you know in the in the NFL they have a red flag and they throw it on the field. And sometimes you get the crowd like challenge like calling for the challenge because I think somebody was off or you know somebody was out of bounds or whatever is happening in the NFL or in in the NBA they think it was a foul so on and so forth. And I agree. I think if you lose the challenge there should be some sort of punishment now and the way they do this in the u.s is usually if you lose the challenge you don't have another one right so you're not able to challenge the decision again and you also lose a timeout in the nfl i, I think you get like you know I, I can't remember what happens in the nba but i think you just lose the sub i think if you challenge and you get it wrong i think you just lose the sub I'm not talking about goal line technology. Goal line technology should exist. But when we're talking about offside calls or fouls in the buildup, those sorts of things, a red card, say there's a nasty challenge and the ref gives a yellow, take your challenge flag, throw it on the field. No, that was a red. Look at it again. And if it's not a red, you lose a sub and you can't challenge again. Oh, nice. Run! Oh. It's a very simple system. What does it change? It changes the fact that we have to that, that, that the refs are in charge of when to stop the game and what to look at. That's what it changes. And you don't feel like that's a big change, but it's a huge change. John T, thank you for the four months. Because for the vast majority of the game, for one, the refs don't have to worry about it. Which is clearly when you hear all of this, like, they're doubling. Because what happens is the refs get one wrong. They get one wrong. So now all of a sudden, what in? Hold that thought. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Hold. Bro, does it matter that he's off? Does it re he knew he was off. All right. Does it matter? That might be the worst miss I've seen in a... I'm going to go with a week. In a week. That's my third string striker doing his thing. Maseko. Oh, Maseko. Dang it, I need to put that freaking instruction in for him to stay wide. I do have it. And what, what is he doing in there, dude? Why, 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 why? All right, Morena, Maselle, Kudumela. So what I've been noticing happening, I'm going to finish this thought. What I've been noticing happening is the Premier League refs get one wrong. And understandably, they go, wow, we don't want to mess up again. Let's make sure we don't miss anything. So they freaking review everything. When the team and the coach is in charge of challenging a call, the ref isn't even thinking about it. You're just going along with the game, and when the flag hits the field, you go, hey, what do you want to challenge? And they go, yeah, we want to look at whether that was a red or not. You go, okay, and then you go look at it. Yeah, and if, no, if you get the challenge correct, you keep the challenge. That's how it works. They do this in tennis, too. So you have a challenge. You have one challenge, let's just say, in the prim. And if you think, like, a goal goes in and you think somebody was offside in the buildup, then you throw your challenge flag or you tap the fourth official or whatever. You press your buzzer. I don't know. And the ref comes over and he's like, what do you want to challenge? And you go, well, I think that guy was offside in the buildup. And he goes, all right, let's take a look at it. And then they go take a look at it. And if he was offside, you keep your challenge, no goal. If he wasn't offside, then you lose your challenge and you lose a sub. I think that would solve a lot of the problems VAR has. We wouldn't get nearly as many reviews. There would be a much better natural flow to the game. It would be much less. Oh, that's beautiful. Goal! That is gorgeous. Tapello Maseko.
Two, I have a punishment? No, dude, they got five subs. What do you mean? You have five subs. Losing a sub window would be more harsh. Now, the one question, one very good question, is what happens if you've already used all your subs? I don't know. I don't know. I'm open to suggestions on that while we're just coming up with this rule. I, I, I don't know. Your last sub gets subbed off, dude. That Okay, that I think is too harsh. I think a little a fun thing would be the opposing coach gets to give a yellow card to one of the players on your team. It's not too harsh, but it definitely has a bit of an effect on the game so much. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to disincentivize challenging for the sake of challenging. If you're challenging, you better be pretty darn sure you're right. That's the point of the taking away the sub or finding some other punishment. Red card for the coach? Nah, I mean, that's too harsh. But like a yellow card where the other coach gets to go, yeah, I'm going to give one of your center backs a yellow. You can't give him a second yellow, but you can give somebody a yellow. Oh, the other. I love that. No, you don't want to have it affect the next game because sometimes you know, it's a final. There's no next game. And you, the other team gets an extra sub. I love that. That's simple, too. That's really simple. Easy for everybody to understand. Applicable in every situation. Honestly, all of this is just making football more one of your American, one of the American sports. No, it's not. Not at all. Grillito, honestly, if you've ever watched like NFL, dude, we're when we go to our video reviews, we're reviewing like blades of grass, right? And we do it all the time, the entire game. This is just making VAR better. Look, just because we're American doesn't mean every idea we've had is bad. You know what I mean? Like, the the idea of the challenge flag is not bad. You know? Just, like, just because it's an American idea doesn't inherently mean it's bad. I don't think this would ruin the game. I don't want to ruin the game. The reason I like soccer, I like football, is because it's different than all the sports that I also grew up with. It's global. It has this, you know international community thing so i don't want to change it my goal is not to my goal is not to change it i just think the challenges would actually return that would take some of the americanness out of the game because you watch a premier league match and sometimes it feels like you're watching review simulator and there's no communication i don't know whose idea was that Like, cause in the, in, you ever watched an NFL game? That's another thing. Like we've been doing review in NFL for 40 years. We've figured out a few ways that this can work and keep the spirit of the game going. Like there's no communication either. In the NFL, the ref comes out and addresses the crowd and goes, after further review, the ruling on the field stands as called. Like, Or like if it's a catch, right? If you've ever watched American football, you got to have control of the ball and get both feet in inbounds. And it'll go, the receiver did not maintain possession of the ball through the ground. Like, talk about why they made the call to the crowd. Let's keep beating these guys down. Sweato Darby, what's up? If we play them in a cup, you might as well just move us on to the next round already. So, so here, here what the amendments we're making to VAR because I want Premier League, you know, football to feel like Premier League football, right? I want it to feel that way. Again, I want it to be the natural, free flowing, the clock is optional sort of game that I fell in love with. And right now, it's not that. Oh, nice goal, son. Zakele Lapasa, 4 and 1. Let him cook. Dude, you want to know something interesting, Critshot? I grew up 
in the southern United States, where American football is worshipped, uh, it is religion, it is, you know, I... Well, let me tell you this. During college football season in the U.S., I do not spend my weekends watching the Premier League. I spend my weekend watching American football, right? It is still hardwired in the blood, like, even though it's terrible for your brain. Um, like, so I, I am of that ilk, but I also love football. I have played soccer, as I would call it, since I was six years old. I've always loved it. I have 10,000 hours in football manager, right? I played FIFA obsessively every year before that. I am basically, I walk in both worlds. I walk, I walk in both worlds. Audible glitch is like, you cannot like American football and football. I am very sorry. Nice to meet you. I love both sports. And what I can tell you for a fact is that if you talk to, like, for example, the guy that helped me get that cow out of the ditch, and you're like, what do you think of soccer? And he'll go, oh, it's boring. Nothing happens. Like, they just sit there and pass the ball back and forth, and then the game ends, and they're flopping all over the place. They're soft. It's boring. Nothing happens. And then if you ask somebody that watches football, watches, you know, born and bred Sunderland fan, as an example, and you go up to them, and you're like, why do you hate American football? It's like, oh, there's so many commercials. There's so many breaks in the play. Nothing happens. They're soft. You know, they, they get a break every five seconds. They're sucking on oxygen in the sidelines. They have the exact same, they have the exact same thing. Like, it's the exact same argument. It's boring. Nothing happens. There's a ton of time where they're not doing anything. It's the exact same argument. Come from both directions. So my take is somebody that's been very fortunate in my life to be a huge fan of both is that if you don't understand the sport, it feels like nothing's happening. That's my take. If you don't understand the sport, it feels like there's nothing happening. And there's nothing wrong with not understanding a sport at all. I don't blame anyone for not under... I don't blame the, you know, the guy that helped us get the cow out of the hole for not understanding soccer. Dude grew up in North Florida his whole life. Go Gators, right? That's all he cares about, and that's fine. And if you didn't grow up in the United... That's a red. Get him out of here! No sin bin for him, dude. But I will always advocate for, if you don't understand the sport, if you don't understand the sport, that does not mean that it sucks and is boring. <laughs> like, as in my experience, most sports are awesome. Challenge flag? Yeah, I don't think they're challenging that call. Like, that's why you'll never catch me. You'll never catch me talking down to any sport. You won't. Because if it's a sport that a bunch of people play, you know what? It's probably fun to play. And it's probably fun to watch, even if I don't know what the heck's going on. This is your first good take this stream. Uh, if, okay. I think the challenge flag's fun. I think the penalty thing I was talking about is probably fun, too. I don't get how commercials become a tradition. Look, the way American football is designed is there's a play and then a break and then a play and then a break and then a play and then a break. That's just how it works. And the uh, commercials become a tradition in the Super Bowl because the Super Bowl is the most watched event in the United States every year. And so it costs like $2 million to get a commercial in there for 30 seconds. And so those commercials are always hilarious. They're always like the funniest commercials. Everybody's always talking about them at work the next day. You're like ranking what are the funniest commercials. And of course, that feeds into the system where now if you're buying a Super Bowl commercial, you're like, dang, I got to make this really good and really funny or else nobody's going to remember it. And so the Super Bowl commercials are always really funny and everybody's always talking about them. And that's why. Yep, it's a tie, Dad. <laughs> 
That was a legendary one. The Doritos had like the Dorito Samurai dude in like full plate armor made up of nacho cheese Doritos. I always wanted that. It's not like there's a commercial after every play. I mean, there's not. There's just not. It's just if, if you grow up where the main sport that you're watching only has commercials at halftime, it's going to feel like there are commercials all the time because there's a lot more than that. The game also takes three and a half hours instead of an hour and a half. And yeah, the ball's in play for probably like 15 to 20 minutes. Right? The game clock is an hour. But because of the way the sport is designed, where it's a play and then a break and then a play and then a break, it just, you know, it feels different. That's a low percentage. Yeah, it is. But while the ball is in play, You know, the funny thing is I, I agree with both people. There are some soccer matches I've watched. I'm like, this is so boring. <laughs> Basically, Manchester City playing any team in the bottom half of the league table. Like, go show somebody that's never watched soccer one of those matches and tell me they won't have the right takeaway from that match. Where their takeaway is, wow, nothing happened. And then on the flip side of that, yeah. There are too many commercials in American football, obviously. But while the ball is in play in American football, it is intense. So, like, you, you have to understand the argument from both sides. Jazz, thank you for the 20 gifted subs. Like, I can, I, I can totally understand the argument from both sides. I completely understand the argument from both sides. Where you're like, well, there's so many commercials, the ball's almost never in play. And then on the flip side, it's like, yeah, well, you're playing, you know, the ball's in play for 45 straight minutes, but nobody scored. <laughs> like, you know, nothing really happened. There were two shots. It was Atletico Madrid against Chelsea. Like, I get, I get that. I get that from both sides. I'm going to bring in uh, Rushwin. All right, we are up three goals, boys. Tell me we can hang on to this. I just don't have four hours. No, yeah. I, like I said, I don't blame anybody for not being into a sport. Just don't dump on it, you know? Just don't say the sport sucks just because you don't understand it. That's the whole point of what I'm saying. I don't blame anybody. I'm not like, yeah, man, you're going to stay up till 4 a.m. to watch the NFL. Hell yeah, brother. No, who cares? All right? I don't. St I wouldn't stay up till 4 a.m. to watch it. Also, no commercials on the Red Zone channel. Damn straight. I love the Red Zone channel. What do fans in America do during ad breaks? I don't know, go to the bathroom. I'll tell you what, during college football, during college football, right, I'll have three TVs. Sorry, I don't know why I did that. I have three TVs in our living room in this apartment. We have three, yeah, drink beer, exactly. So during college football, there are like 130-something Division I college football teams. So there's a lot of games going on. I'll pick my three favorite games, and one goes to commercial. I mute that TV and unmute the other one. <laughs> Go watch the other game. Yeah, you flick, you usually you have like two games you're watching, flick to the other one. Yeah, it's fine. And then if you ever want to get into the NFL, don't watch a game. Watch the Red Zone channel. See, the beauty of a sport that is play-based is that when an exciting play is about to happen, you can jump between the games. So what the Red Zone channel does is it, you are watching the game where a team is most likely to score. <laughs> and then the moment that moment ends, you go to the next game where a team is most likely to score. It's awesome. It's one of the greatest ideas America's ever come up with, the Red Zone channel. It is seven hours of commercial-free American football. So if you ever want to get into it, then now it's, that, that's what I would recommend because I've solved your commercial problem right there. Because it's all of the NFL games, but on one channel. And when there's a play going on where a team is most likely to score, they take you there to show you that play. 
It's like a goal show, except because of the way, you know, the difference in the sports. It's like, instead of showing you the goal after the fact, they show you. Like, goal, the goal show is based off of Red Zone. Red Zone has been around for a while. It's done by this one guy named Scott Hansen on the NFL Network. And it's just one of those ideas where you they could tell me, like, everybody I know. Dude, I don't even watch the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I watch Red Zone, and then I'm like, oh, the Bucs are on Red Zone. We're about to score. Like, I don't even watch my own team. I'm just watching Red Zone. It's like having every match on key highlights. Exactly. It's like having every match on key highlights, and then it just picks the match that has the key highlight running at that time. Dude, you are joking. I am getting, ev like, I could sneeze on a guy in the box, and we'd give away a penalty right now. Man, that sucked. Well, let's go. Get it right back. Swagger. It's open. Oh, Maseko. Maseko! Come on, man. Come on, man. Oh, he took him with a long touch, with the pace, right by another one. Just walked it in. All right, Hussaini, you're off. Sabia, you're in. That's all right. Dude had to work super hard to get that ball. Good save. Wait, did Corey Perry's contract actually get canceled? Hold on. No! No! They. That's real? Dude, I thought that was a meme. Wait, I'll be honest. All right, Corey Perry is a hockey player, uh, NHL hockey player. Uh, he has won the Ballon d'Or of hockey before. Uh, that was a while ago. He's 38 now. He's still a serviceable player. Uh, I know that because he was on my team. He was on the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning for uh, two years, the past two seasons. He was good. I liked him. Uh, he was an effective player. We had two teams. You know, we made it to the finals one year. Um, we had two good teams the last two years. I really liked him. Um, but he's 38 now. He's kind of more of a poacher, you know. And Corey Perry is now on the Chicago Blackhawks. Or should I say he was on the Chicago Blackhawks. And he was just waived for unacceptable conduct. Now, Corey Perry is teammates. Oh, Lord. What's that 18-year-old's name? Bedard. So, Connor Bedard is like the Jude Bellingham of hockey right now. Connor Bedard is the Jude Bellingham of hockey. He is the wonder kid. He's 18 years old. He already plays in the NHL, which is insane. That's the youngest you can possibly be in, be in the NHL at the same time. He's nuts. He's a very good player. And they had a... um. So... This is all conjecture. Nobody knows if this is true, but if it's true, it is hilarious. This is conjecture. But there was a mom's night 
at the Blackhawk Stadium. There was a mom's night. So these, here's, here's here the facts. Here are the facts, chat. There was a mom's night at the Blackhawk Stadium. And they were in a booth. And Corey Perry appeared in the booth. Right? He was just in the booth. You know, everybody thought it was funny. Like, oh, Corey Perry chatting up the moms. And now Connor Bedard's only 18, which if you're doing the math, you're like, all right, his mom would be however many years old. Corey Perry's 38 years old. And then after Corey Perry pops up in this booth, he gets waived from the team for unacceptable conduct. You know, that, that's all we know. That's all we know, Chet. That's all we, that, that's all we know. We don't know anything else. We don't know anything else. I didn't know he actually got waved, though. I just saw the video of him popping up in the mom's box and thought it was funny. That's, that's all we know. Nick Potter, thank you for the 35 months. It is almost certainly wrong, but it is hilarious that he happened to get waved at the same time that that video of him being in the mom's box was going around. If there was ever a player to do this, it'd be Corey Perry. Corey Perry is an annoying player to play against, is how I would word that. I can't believe we let that guy get all the way there. I mean, it's okay. We're up three goals with two and a half minutes left, but that was ugly. Yeah, I, I kept expecting that run to be turned by our defense, and it just never was, and that dude almost shelved a beautiful goal. Yeah, Corey Perry, a little like Luis Suarez, I guess. He's like a player you love to hate if they're on the other team, exactly. But you love him when he's on your team. He's one of those guys. I loved him on that Stars team. Oh, yeah. You ran, you ran into us. <laughs> you know the funny thing about Corey Perry? I've always felt terrible. Corey Perry has never won the Stanley Cup, which is the trophy in, in hockey, right? There's only one. You win the Stanley Cup. You win the championship. That was a great win for us. I'm going to try and keep the team focused because complacency seems to be ripping all over the park. But that is a nice win. And we're into the semifinals of whatever that cup is. I don't know. There's three different cups in South Africa. That's the Telcom Cup. And we're into the semifinal after a crushing win over Kaiser Chiefs. And we will be ready. We will be ready. Ah, great. Now we have Cape Town Spurs and Golden Arrows. All while missing our two best players due to injury. I'm having a great time. He won with the Ducks? Oh, he did win with the Ducks? He was on the Ducks? Oh, my. I mean, I knew he was on the Ducks. I didn't know he was that. Oh, I guess he is that old. <laughs> to be on that Ducks team. Wow, he must have been young. Okay, so he, he, never mind. He's won it. But he hadn't won it in a long time. So Corey Perry made the Stanley Cup final in consecutive years. He was on the um uh he was he was he was on the Stars, the Dallas Stars. And then he was on the Montreal Canadiens. In both years, consecutive years, he made the final with different teams, which is insane. And lost to the same team. Us. <laughs> so I felt so bad for him. I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean it. <laughs> well, yeah, then, of course, he was on Tampa. Well, then, sorry, I didn't finish the other part of that story. So he makes the final two consecutive years and loses to the Tampa Bay Lightning. So then he becomes a free agent again, Corey Perry, and he signs for the Tampa Bay Lightning, who then promptly make the final and lose. So he lost three consecutive finals with three different teams. In the third year, he had joined the team that he had lost the previous two years to and lost. Silly Lukey, thank you for the eight months. <laughs> Appreciate you supporting the channel, dude. Thank you for the Prime. Smithy, thank you for the 32 months. Thank you so much for the Prime. 
The guy's cursed. Yeah, now he's been cut. Or suspiciously popping up in the booth during mom's night. You know, I'm not... All I did, all we did was report the facts, chat. No, he probably, nothing probably happened. He probably just got cut, but man, that's funny. All right, semifinals. We could get Amazulu, Mamelodi, Sundowns. I want Cape Town. Okay, that's cool. Away against Mamelodi, Sundowns. That works. Cup semifinal all set. When is it? December 3rd. All right. We have we just have fixture congestion until until we hit the winter break. Lowered. All right, they said it was conduct detrimental to the... No, it was definitely something off the ice. Yeah, they said it was like breaking team rules or, or something. Who knows? Who knows? They always try and keep that sort of stuff in the locker room. I don't know. Most of you guys probably never watched an NHL game in your life, so this whole conversation has just been an annoying sidetrack. To you, I apologize. Hopefully, I was able to orient you enough so you knew what was going on. No, Screamer Shabalala set his retirement date at the end of the year. How can I, how am I supposed to go on without Screamer Shabalala? Do we even continue at that point without Screamer Shabalala as our general manager? I can't. Josh, thank you for the tier one, dude. Thanks for supporting the stream. Enjoy the bacon. Enjoy the emotes. And make sure you get in the subsection of the Discord so you can, you know, get and save your saves and those sorts of things. That's it. We're leaving. Yep. He retires. I'm gone. How am I possibly expected to work in an environment without Screamer Shabalala as my manager or my general manager? Unbelievable. <sighs> okay. Can we play? Oh, yeah. Cape Town Spurs. And then Golden Arrows, which is a team I actually haven't come up against yet. Both of these teams I haven't played yet in any of the cups or anything these are two just league matches then we have international break then we play black leopards again how close am i to my coaching license i don't think i have my national a yet i think i'm still working on it yeah i still just have my national b studying for the a license but it doesn't tell me should be soon ish and then I'll ask for my Continental C license. Become a real boss. <sighs> All right, fitness check. How we doing? Who's tired? Maselle? Fair. Good thing I've got Matros. Oh, and Sabisi, you are in for Morena. And Morena is going to go there for Sabia because he is an even bigger impact player in that situation. Yeah, we're going full first team. I think we'll be able to survive it and kind of get through it. I am going to start Shegafatso Mabasa in this game. I want to get him match sharp. I'm going to see if he can go 60 minutes, and then we'll get Lapasa up. But Mabasa is my number two striker. Lapasa is my number three striker. So we want to get Mabasa up first. Um, relax and play your natural game. All right. Oh, my God, I forgot the Maseko thing. Dang it. You guys tried. I appreciate that. James, thank you for the four months, dude. I appreciate you. It's about to turn into a crowded mess at the top of the table. We just have to get as many points as we can. Cape Town Spurs is in the bottom half of the table, so this has got to be three. They have a huge home crowd, though, so it's going to be tough for us. Raucous uh, atmosphere, environment. All right, at least I remembered immediately at the start of the match now run wide with the ball Maseko you got one foot you got one skill run all righty that should be open all day long Make this poor winger run in circles. Ooh, you're not catching him. So, nice, Zungu. Nice. 
Ah. What do you got? Seco, play him. Husseini, he's a good crosser. Nobody's there. <laughs> Ref, all Kudumela. That'd have been sick. Mali were winning the U-17 World Cup semifinal against France until they get a red. Well, yeah, of course, it's Mali. Mali finds new and creative ways to lose at every international level while being very talented. But, yes, they were winning in the second half and then got a red card and conceded twice. Germany only beat the U.S. by a goal, and they're the other team in the final. Pudumela. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. I like that. Shegafatso couldn't find the ball. Okay. Husseini. Yes, Maseko! Look at the separation he gets. Poor Feyenoord. Dude, I need to check the scores. We'll check the scores after this match. Imagine Molly losing the first spot in their group to Comoros instead of Ghana. It would happen to Molly. They've somehow never made the World Cup despite being one of Africa's five most talented teams for the last two World Cup cycles at least. Husseini's, and they also haven't managed to like make a serious run at an AFCON either. Like it's amazing. They have a lot of talent though. I'm always, I'm rooting for Mali. I want them. I love debutantes at the World Cup. I love new teams being great in the international scene. Oh, make the pass, dude. He, not even. No, 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 no. The wide open guy at the edge of the box. How do you miss that? Uh, oh, shoot. Dude, Ali Ahamada just got caught out so hard by that pass. He was so in the wrong position. Ah, we were really lucky we didn't get scored on there. Oh, yeah. I love that pass. Flying into the counter. Sungu, Maseko, Maseko. That was good. This is end to end stuff here. Yeah, dude, they have two shots. They both clattered the post. Ahamada, 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 Ahamada. Drop a dime, son. All right, in the middle. The middle. Thank you. Left side. Oh, oh, Sorero. I didn't know you had that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Dang it, dude. All right, Posty. I've liked most of this playlist, but I'm going to go with no. Ooh. Ooh, don't like that. I don't like shooting there. I have no problem with that foul. If he can get out of here without a card or without getting a card, which somehow he did, that is a glorious foul. I think Molly are past their golden generation. They're not. I mean, their youth teams are still doing really well. Now, their senior team is should have been in the last World Cup. They've got a couple of academies now, which is why they are producing the guys they're producing, by the way. Oh, Zungu. Oh, my goodness, Zungu. What a run, dude. I want to watch that again. That was hot. Dude. God, I, I mean, you did the hard part.
Look, I'm telling you, Mali is one of the five most talented teams in Africa. There are not five teams more talented than Mali in Africa. It's been that way for at least eight years. And they just can't figure it out. They were so close last time. And then they got a red card and lost 1-0 on aggregate. They just couldn't score. The games were amazing to watch. It was one-way traffic. I think they get it this year. Ghana doesn't look that good. I think they get the next World Cup. Unless they slip against Comoros, because apparently everybody's doing that now. It's the cool thing to do. The team that impressed me most in qualifiers was Sudan. I was surprised they won their game. All right, I'm going to yell at them. Maseko, you have to absolutely baby, but I'm going to yell at them. Do you think Canada can win the World Cup? No. I, I don't. I, I do not. I think the United States can. This is getting ridiculous. I mean, like, how many players in my, like, category of real difference makers are going to get hurt? The speed demon Maseko just picked up an injury. So now we're back to Kermit Erasmus, baby. Oh, get in! There it is. Shegafatso Mabasa. Just got to keep getting results. Look, this is not going to be a pretty aesthetically pleasing part of the season. We just have to keep getting results. We just have to keep getting results. Go out there, find a way to win, be the better team, manage our way to a win. That's well worked, good finish. Not the U.S. either? I think the U.S. can absolutely win the World Cup. I think it'll probably happen in my lifetime. I really hope it does, because I'm going to be sitting on this stream laughing so hard. I'm going to be laughing so hard. We live, in a, we live in a simulation where we just watched the Croatian national team make it to the World Cup final, right? And, and you're, you're willing to look me dead in the eyes and tell me that a country that hasn't even fully embraced the sport yet, a country where the sport is the fifth most popular sport, and yet it has made three of the last four World Cup round of 16s in spite of that, you're telling me that that country can never win the World Cup? Because if you, are, if you are look at those facts and internalize them, you will, re you will realize how ridiculous what you are saying actually is. I realize that we are outsiders when it comes to the sport, and that is an understatement, that we are the butt of almost every joke when it comes to football. But it would be nearsighted and foolish to assume that while football is the second most popular sport among like under 25 people in the United States, that the demographic of the U.S. is not going to shift and that there isn't going to be a greater emphasis on the sport and on developing players for the sport for a national team that is already 11th in the world. Oh, Newcastle just took the lead, dude. Dude. Duh. Yeah, and I think another thing to point out is, like, the U.S. loves winning at sports. The U.S. has a really dominant, aggressive sports culture. And so, like, all you, like, if you win, the U.S. cares. And the better the U.S. men's national team gets, the more they're winning. And the more people are going to care. And that whole thing, of like, Young people in the United States 
I, I, I saw some. I I don't know if this is true, but in Generation um, Alpha, which is like past Gen Z, right? Soccer is the most popular sport in the United States. You can't win if you're not from a good region. I just think that's wrong. I mean, like, I, I just think it's wrong. You saw it correctly, yeah. Generation Alpha Soccer is the number one sport in the U.S. Gen Z, it's like number two. Um, I'm a millennial. For us, it's like three, I think. It's behind NBA and NFL. You need good challengers to be able to get good. Yeah, I mean, we already had the best women's team in the world for how many years? It's very true. People add, so if you want to look at like, if, you, if you're factoring in like women's football, and I realize that you know, I might just kick a hornet's nest there. And if you have an opinion against this, I don't care, right? Touch some grass, right? But like, we're the Brazil of women's football. We are. So, we have a pretty decent footballing culture as it is. If you factor that one in, who else am I subbing in? There we go. You used to be good. Oh, it's so harsh, but true. Oh. Oh. <laughs> So harsh, but true. Hey, look, we got screwed out of that match against the Netherlands, man. We got screwed. Wow. You you got me back with that one, 100%. We're the Brazil of women's football. You used to be good. Yep, we did. And it was glorious. We did used to be good. We used to have, like, all the best players in the world. <laughs> uh, we were sipping tea against England. It was awesome. And then uh, very quickly it wasn't. Um, oh, yeah, the new generation, like the U.S., I, I hope is going to continue to be one of the top five, perpetually one of the top five teams in the world in women's football. The men just need to catch up. You know, who know what, what are they doing? Our Brazil, the Brazil of women's football, technically true. I mean, technically that logic kind of checks out, you know, like it does. There's a one to one there. Sabizi, um, no, we'll leave him in. But, like, the U.S. clearly has the ability to produce quality players. More so than a lot of other places in the rest of the world. Because we've done it on the women's side. We just don't have the same swagger and confidence and history and developmental infrastructure for the men, which is weird. Like, most countries, it's the other way around. But uh, we managed to somehow mess that up. Now, the way the reason that the U.S. was so good at uh, women's football is because we had Title IX, which was this law that um, basically, if you're a U.S. college, and we have huge college sports over here, if you didn't know, uh, university sports are a huge deal in the U.S., and you had to have the same number of men's and women's athletes in your program, basically, is what the rule is. That was passed in the 70s. And so basically every college, even when soccer wasn't that popular in the United States, every university or college had a women's soccer team because that was a way to balance out the numbers, right? Because you had a men's American football team. There's no women's American football team. So you needed a way to have the same number of men's and women's athletes and having a women's soccer team was the reason that many teams were able to meet that quota. And it also is the reason that the U S was providing like legitimately hundreds of thousands of women, the opportunity to play and develop in a way that women in the rest of the world were not able to for a long time. So have you ever wondered why the U.S. was actually good at women's, like football, women's soccer? That's why. Because the U.S. had the biggest infrastructure for developing talent on the women's side of the game in the world for a long time. How does a foreign student apply to an American university? Pretty straightforward, I think. I mean, I don't know. I've never done it, obviously, but 
Uh, you just look up that university, Google how to apply to that university, and there's a process. Usually uh, you fill out an application, answer a few questions, attach your school history. The questions usually are like essays, you know. Well, I remember one, I applied to Wake Forest, and the, the question I got asked was describe yourself in a tweet. So I spent a week agonizing over every character of the tweet. Yeah, I think, I mean, there's like student visas and stuff, but I have no idea what I'm talking about if I try and go further than that. I just know that a student visa is a real thing. Hey, good win, boys. Good win. One nil on the road in the league. We take those, especially with, you know, the injuries and the fixture congestion we've been running through. Ah, Tapella Maseko's out for three weeks. So we're missing Shkurin, Saavedra, Maseko, Zwane. We're missing four important first team players. Mabasa ended his goal drought, though, and that was nice. All right, who's tired? Serrero, Husseini, and uh, don't need to rest, Maela. You guys are going to get two days. You guys are going to get a day. See if we can get you guys back and, and ready for the golden arrows away. Yet another big league match. Jeshi, thank you so much for the 29 months. <laughs> Don't you think the cost of travel leagues hurting the men's side? Yeah. Uh, soccer, football in the U.S. is a rich, rich kid sport. It's a rich kid sport. The moment, the moment that that changes, the world is cooked. The moment you're watching Last Chance U, and those kids are looking at soccer as the same sort of opportunity to get out of their situation as American football or basketball. Cooked. Because the U.S. has, like, a just a freaking meat factory for talent in all of our sports leagues. But if you ever watched Last Chance You and you meet these kids where there's a lot of poverty in the U.S. and a lot of people in that poverty view the only way out is sports. And sometimes they're right. And when you're looking at that, they are never able to afford playing football. They're never able to afford playing soccer. And the moment that U.S. soccer is able to change that, and if you've not seen that show, Last Chance You, and you want to, I mean, it's just a great show. Uh, but it also is a great introduction to the, uh, the, um, to the America that a lot of people don't see, right? And, and, and the moment that you're able to create a pathway for those kids to understand what football is, what soccer is, and that it might be a path out, right? Then it's over. Like, it's completely over. Because we produce athletes out of that milieu better than... Almost anyone. I mean, it. it's like, I don't know. It's just something super ingrained is like, it's the way out. And everybody just repeats that like a mantra to themselves. Like, it's the way out. It's the way out. It's the way out. It's the way out. I'm going to play football. Oh, no. Sorry, guys. OBS just went down. I don't know why. Oh, we're back. OBS just went down there for a hot second. We're back. It just, like, didn't say any drop frames. We're back. We're back. We're here. So he said there's more talent in the back, street of, uh, back streets of Bogota than the front street of Indiana. You're probably right. But the U.S. has 20 Bogotas. You know? Like, you're probably right, but the U.S. has a lot of cities, right? So if you're just going off Indiana, yeah. Uh, do you think the U.S. can recover from 100 years of no football? Yeah, 100%. The gods had enough of your BS? Dude, I think I'm right. I really, like, I really think I'm right, and I've, I've not heard an argument as to, as to why I wouldn't be. I'm not saying the U.S. is going to start winning everything and 
because you know because nobody can do that if somebody could do that brazil would have done it a long time ago right just based off of development and infrastructure and interest in the game um i'm gonna go talk to this guy but the u.s has a a problem and soccer is a rich kid sport in the united states which is the opposite of most of the places um I'm going to try and give Miranda the playing time he wants. If not, I'll move him in January, but we'll see. Milan equalized against Dortmund. That's nice. Nice. Sounds like USA nationalism. I mean, just look at the Olympics. You know what I mean? Like, just... the world's best players aren't american look celestial there are some issues with the way that basketball is taught in the united states which allows us to not have a nikola Jokic. but the united states is so much better at basketball than any other country when you put like five on the floor against five on the floor in basketball the gap is gonna close at some point and i'm excited for that because i love basketball but you know what percentage of the NBA is from the United States? It's like 95% at least. He's from America. Of course, he's going to big up the U.S. Look, I'm just saying that. Okay, we're, I've gotten into like five different conversations and haven't ended one of them. So I'm going to start putting bows on these. Um, first off, U.S. soccer's biggest problem is it needs to make the game more affordable and accessible. The U.S. has basically no academies. The closest club of any kind that had a senior level was an hour and a half away from me on a highway when I was growing up. And I grew up in a big city. And I grew up in a, I grew up in a big city. NBA couldn't produce an American superstar since LeBron. Yeah, I forgot about Steph Curry, too. It's okay. Um, no, like, I love it. Nikola Jokic is, like, my favorite player. So I'm not hating on any of that at all. I'm just saying that, like, you take the five best Serbian dudes and the five best American dudes, it's not a game. MLS teams have no academy. They do. But that's it. Right, what you guys have, like, if, I, if you're in England, right, you're in most places in Europe, you guys have the big clubs and their academies, and then you have, like, a hundred other clubs and, like, their academies that have a senior team. In the U.S., that doesn't exist. I'm not kidding. The oldest, they're, like, the closest team to me with a senior team that also had youth teams was the Tampa Bay Rowdies in the USL. They were 100 they were an hour, 20 minutes away in a car. Then next was Orlando City. That was an hour and a half. Again? Oh, my God. Really? All right, we're back. We're back. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with OBS and Twitch right now, but uh, clearly they want me to end the stream. We were close to ending anyways. Thank you guys for some really exciting conversations. I enjoy days like this where we're able to just kind of sink our teeth in. Watch, Go watch the rest of the Champions League. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Fist pump. Love you. See you guys. I'm going to try and get away before OBS decides to torpedo again. I don't know what's going on between that and everything else, but... I'm gonna. Uh, it's telling me it's time to end the uh, end the stream. I hope the U.S. is able to make the game more affordable, so we can see if I'm right or not. How about that? <laughs>
Because I think if the U.S. is able to make the game more affordable, I think the U.S. is then able to reach a level that is capable of beating anybody. Um, you know, where it's kind of perpetually top 10, top five in the world and hanging around with the Englands and the Francis. But at the very earliest, that'd be 20 to 30 years from now. I hope it happens. I'll see you guys. Thank you for the fun conversations today. Be back tomorrow, all right?